All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Only Comics. I'm Mike. This is Adrian. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, dude? Uh, man, I don't know. We, I, I think this weather needs some drugs or something. Dude, what happened? I, I don't know what's going on anymore. We went back to winter. I, we went back to something. I don't know what's going to happen. Crazy, dude. Now. I'll tell you what's hot, though, is that shirt, dude. <laughs> Did you get that from OnlyComicsMerch.com? Um, I, that sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> well, guess what else you can get there, Adrian? You can get this hat. You can get this shirt there, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here we are. Do another episode. You know we're one episode away from 50? Um, I feel like that at one point. <laughs> <laughs> was that a few years ago? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. We're well, well, only comics is almost fifty weeks old, so right. it's getting old. You know? Okay. Yeah. So we, we, I'm thinking we're gonna do some type of giveaway now. I don't even know what we're gonna give away. I don't know how we're gonna give it away. This is how we do things. Only comics, we just make it up as we go. All right. That's right. right. So we're or gonna change our minds as we go. That, yeah. We, we may Man. show up next week and not give anything away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. If there's no box of Joe here, we're giving nothing away. Uh, well, <laughs> might want to rethink that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, well, as they say, we'll table that discussion. Exactly, so exactly. Um, there's a lot going on. I almost didn't make it here today. You know, I got up a little late. Mm. And then I'm driving here, and then there's people all over the place for some reason. And everyone's going the same speed on the highway. Maybe church? Maybe. I don't know. They, um, They're just cruising along, dude. I, I don't know. What I, maybe, maybe it's like the pre-Easter church. They oh, want to get it out of the way Easter. kind of a deal. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, we're coming off of St. Patty's Day last week. You, got, you could you could have wore the green last week with the Hulk, man. Um, <laughs> I was I was working. You were working. I, I not no not going there. <laughs> 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 well, anyways, uh, we got, we got a, a, a amazing show planned today. We got another hidden gem that mm -hmm. that's um, going to be a little X Men themed. I saw that. I like that. Right. You know, I won't spoil who it is. Then we have our Omega series, um, Omega Mutant series review. Yep. We're going to do. We got our, our. We've been building up this Secret Wars talk for a while, mm -hmm. and you dug into the the book this week, 2015. Yep. Actually, mm -hmm. we both read both versions recently. Yes. Yep. So we're gonna dig into that and um, X Men '97. Do a lot of X Men this week. Yep. Yes, it About is. About time. Do Marvel is kicking ass again. Right. DC is still on their sabbatical. Which, which is why there's not been, I, I kind of, I'm starting to feel kind of bad. I know. Well, not really, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just noticing that we haven't been talking about mm. DC just because they're in, you know, somebody else's garage. I don't yes, know. exactly. But there, there is a, um, a trailer for, uh, or a teaser for the Penguin that we're going to okay. watch along today. So DC's there. They're, they're, they're fighting, dude. They're, they're trying, uh, you know. So anyway, you ready to hop into the news, Adrian? Let's go. Let's do this. So, um, first up uh, on news, comic news. So we like to report news and sometimes rumors here. Okay, and then we'll give you kind of our take if we if we're for this or against this. Mm -hmm. um, this one right here, X Men '97, is the highest rated Marvel release of all time on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, Can you believe wow. that? Yeah, because I, I think it's a culmination of, of a few things, right? Um, it's the excitement around it. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of old heads that, you know, um, they want to see the continuation of the old version of right. the X-Men, right? Um, I think the technology has caught up. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that everybody has some kind of screen in front of them all the time, you know, will also increase the viewership. Right. So, And, and I think also they just want to see something done correctly. Exactly. And, 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 and from what I've seen, I, they, they nailed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to dig into it later. But those first two episodes, dude, I thought they were great. Yeah. Um, and, and it does exactly what you said. It, it continues the story because I'm one of those. I guess I'm an old head now, Adrian, mm -hmm. you know, so self-proclaimed old head. Um, so what does that make me? Ooh. Old, right, let's older, not go there. yeah, older <laughs> head maybe. <laughs> that just sounds bad. Let's yeah, you know, on. I think once you're past a certain point, we're all just old heads, Adrian. Okay? Uh, well, thanks for make, trying to make me feel better, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it's I told you last week. It's my job to bring people happiness, here, oh, okay. right? Okay? okay, so I try. Sometimes I fail. Uh, um, but yeah, someone like myself who grew up on this. I mean, X Men '97. I, I was all of like 12 years old at mm -hmm. that point. Um, so to see it now is great. And I've watched a handful of the past episodes recently and as good as the stories are the animation doesn't hold up right. they're hard to watch at, yeah. at times you know but seeing this done in this style mm -hmm. is um dude it, it was just it, it my wife was like did it meet your expectations I'm like no it exceeded my expectations right. you know i i thought it would i had faith in it but we know marvel can screw some shit up right. i mean right. we've all seen the marvels <laughs> well actually all of us didn't no one saw it except for me and you right right <laughs> so um x-men 97 100% um, on Rotten Tomatoes, 93% wow. audience score. 
Wow. That's crazy, dude. That's that's crazy. Yeah. So um, I, I can't wait for next week's episode. I guess that's the only downfall, dude, is we had to wait a week right. for it, for the episode. Um, well, it's we'll, a throwback to the old days when you had to actually wait a month. Imagine waiting right. an entire month for the next episode. Oh, dude. Right? Yeah. Hey, maybe maybe they should try some shit like that, though. Or like, not. Build up the I, hype. I don't, no? I don't, think, I don't, think, I don't <laughs> think that'll work today. No, people lose lose attention. Uh, Definitely. This ADHD generation. Um, next up, Mr. Sinister rumored to be the main villain for the X-Men MCU reboot. So now we're talking live action. Mm -hmm. um, the rumor is Sinister is going to be the main baddie, as they say. How do you feel about that? I'm cool with it. As yeah. long, again, it's, it comes down to actor portrayal. Mm -hmm. um, he's not someone that is, you know, top of mind for people. So I think pretty much anybody can play him. Yeah. Unless they just do a bad job of, of casting. Right. So, um, yeah, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the character Sinister. He's, he's a big um, part of the animated series, and mm -hmm. I believe he's rumored to play a big role in this X-Men 97 reboot. Okay. So, I, you know, from Marvel's perspective, they're probably thinking we're going to familiarize everybody with him again in the animated series, right? And mm -hmm. then when it's time to move to live action, everyone kind of has a basis of who he is, but now we get to see that version. Because he's a, a character that we've not seen. We've seen him teased in live action a little bit. There was a scene in um, at the end of one, I think it was at the end of Apocalypse, maybe, where there's a guy um, who's collecting, like, I don't know, DNA from mutants, maybe. And I think on the briefcase, something about, something that he has um, says Nathaniel Eth Essex, which is sinister. Mm -hmm. And then in Deadpool 2, the house that they're at is, like, the Essex house where right. uh, the kid, uh, what's his name, Firestorm? Not Firestorm, but... Um, you know, the chubby kid with the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it, I, he's been teased a little bit, but we've never seen him. So it would make sense for them to bring him out at some point. Yeah. So, Sinister rumored up. Um, Wonder Man. Next up, Wonder Man and Ironheart series are not canceled. So there were some rumors recently that said those two shows were going to be canceled. Because, you know, mm -hmm. Marvel after um, Secret Invasion being a complete dumpster fire. And, you know, the shit show that the Marvels was, they, they've been kind of, like, getting rid of some of these projects that nobody asked for. Mm -hmm. um, these were rumored to be canceled, but now Kevin Feige's confirmed they're both still a go. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about... Wonder Man was actually a hidden gem of yours yeah, a few yes. weeks ago, right? Yes, it was. So yes, they were was. listening there. Yeah, so I'm cool with it. Yeah. Um, I, so just so I don't have to keep repeating it, it's it's really about character casting. Yeah. So let's let's just use that as my baseline whenever yeah. I talk about people so I don't have to keep saying it. But um, I, I it'll be interesting to see which version of the Wonder Man they're mm -hmm. going to do because remember when he first came out, um, he was like moving around. He had like jet packs on his side. I'm like, how is he <laughs> how is he flying with like micro jets on his waist right. without burning up his clothes? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I Ironheart uh, would be also interesting. And, and I'm wondering because they put um, um, Tony Stark's AI in the last Iron Man mm -hmm. movie, right? Yeah. I wonder if he might show up at some point because her armor is pretty much made after Iron Man's correct. stuff. Correct, correct. Um, and now Ironheart was, we don't talk about this movie a lot here, Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, because of how much you, you're not a big fan of it. I'm, I think it's about kind of mid, mm -hmm. but Ironheart debuted in that, Ruby Williams. How did you feel about her portrayal um, so far as Ironheart in the MCU? I think it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's like a, you know, a, a garage, you know, development kind of a, kind of a thing. Um, you know, you got some little genius mm -hmm. hidden in some pocket and, you know, they come out at least, you know, these geniuses get to come out. You know, a lot of geniuses, they just kind of die or get right. killed off by the government. Exactly. You know, kind of a deal for, you know, <laughs> trade something they shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked her portrayal, too. I thought that was one of the, the bright spots of that, you know, very uneven movie, Wakanda Forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. It's very uneven. I like that. You know? Uneven, yeah. Because yeah. I didn't hate it. I think you probably dislike it more than I do because you're not a oh, fan. Oh, I, I, it was atrocious. It was atro I, there's nothing about it, really, that I liked. Yeah. I like the, um, I, I like the tribute to Chadwick. I thought mm -hmm. that was good. Um, although I think it took up so much of the movie mm -hmm. that it movie maybe needed to be a little bit longer because right. the end felt really rushed, mm -hmm. which is why the, you know, Shuri fighting Namor thing wasn't believable because it happened like that, you right. know. Right. Um, and when you think about the concept, okay, he's in this plane, they heat them all up, they dehydrate the, the, the big fish, I guess, you know, <laughs> right. take fish out of water. Yeah. So I get that, but it just, because she became Black Panther in like four minutes right. and she fought it the whole time, it was just very confusing to me how she's like, oh, shit, you know what, I'll be Black Panther now, why not? Right. Um, but so, and that goes back to, and I've said this before on here, I wish that, you know, I feel horrible for what happened to Chadwick Boseman, uh -huh. but I wish they would have 
continued on the character. Right. You know, I don't think that a uh, actor passing away justifies killing off a character in every sense. Like right. they didn't do it with Thunderbolt Ross. Now I know you got T'Challa Thunderbolt Ross, but the guy who plays who played I forget his name, mm -hmm. he passed away. Right. Now Harrison Ford is sliding into that spot. Right. You know, so we, we don't we don't we're not excited about seeing the Red Hulk, but I'm okay with them sliding another actor in there if the dude passed away. Right. You know, and that way that role can continue. I wish that would have been done with um, yeah. Black Panther T'Challa. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why they did that either. I mean, even in Harry Potter, Potter, the headmaster, mm. you know, the original guy, he died off and they brought in somebody else. You know, it, it just it's nonsensical why they why they did that. Right. You know, how many versions, how many actors have paid, played Spider-Man? Yeah, you know? exactly. So I, whatever. But yeah, actually, I take it back. Um, I did like the um, tribute to Chadwick Boseman. Mm, okay. So the beginning of, you know, the credits when they're flipping oh, uh, that the was comics cool. and all. That was cool. After that, the movie sucked. <laughs> Damn, said the movie sucked. Yep. Uh, the, people may say that's a hot take as they say you know I, <laughs> adrian you're on fire again today I, it's my opinion <laughs> um and you're sticking with it for now anyway yeah. you know um <laughs> that one <laughs> yeah. no it's gonna be a while okay you know um that movie thor splitting Ooh. yeah that's that's you know same Damn. level to me that's the same level wow the thor that's that you have like ptsd from that thor split <laughs> absolutely absolutely no I'm gonna. I'm old school. Yeah. I have shell shock. Show shit. You know, from from that. You know, forget this. You know, politically yeah. correct PTSD. No, you got shell, shell shock. Dude. Damn, it was that bad. Wow, well, yeah. shit. You know, Thor does one little split, and you're ruining everybody's uh, life. I, it <laughs> was. It was just nonsense. That's all. Yep. Um, next or last up, if that makes sense, Joker two. So speaking of DC, okay, I got something for you, Adrian. Joker two will be a musical with 15 oh, cover songs <laughs> and maybe some originals. I just why 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 i dude i i have never watched any musical <laughs> any i i can't i hear about these movies are so great and yeah i cannot watch musical it's just why why i i, I, I don't, don't get know it. yeah i'm i am not excited about that and the sad part is the premise of this movie sounds like it could be something pretty cool because mm -hmm. you have it's. I guess it's going to show the beginning of Harley and Joker's relationship, and a lot of it's going to take place in Arkham Asylum, a spot that you know we've seen a lot of comics. You don't. We haven't seen done justice in them. That, that's a hidden gem that's not been done justice in a movie. You know, mm -hmm. Arkham Asylum itself. Right. They're going to waste all that shit with these two fucking idiots singing to each other the whole time. I do. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Wait a minute. Is it? The Penguin is going to be a musical? No, no. God, no. Joker 2. Oh, okay. Got yeah, it, got no. it, got Ooh, it. Definitely not the Penguin. No, the, I hope there's no singing in the Penguin. <laughs> Man, my mind just went all kind of places with that one. Yeah, that, that would have, you think that would have shell-shocked you worse than the split? I, I, <laughs> the Penguin I, I, singing? I, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Imagine um, Colin Farrell's um, Penguin just singing the whole time about Batman. <laughs> I don't want to give them any ideas. They no. might think we're serious about that one. No. Um, so... All right, well, that, that's our news for the week. We like to end the news, Adrian, with a little thumbs up, thumbs down. I think there's going to be some thumbs down on this week, you know, with some <laughs> you of think? these. Uh, yeah, a few. Um, so let's start with number one. You ready? Ready. X-Men 97 is the highest rated Marvel release of all time on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm giving this. I did this for the first. I'm going to do two thumbs up again. First go. time last week, again, two thumbs up. Yep, thumbs up. Mr. Sinister, rumored to be a main villain in the X-Men MCU reboot. I'm giving that a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, you know what? I'm giving myself a thumbs down. You know what I did here? I freaking completely skipped one. What's that? Um, a piece of news. What's that? So we're going to go back in time. All right. All right we're going to travel back. Ready? Number three. <laughs> Sony and Marvel still clashing over Spider-Man 4. But, here's a but, Miles is in either way. So you got Kevin Feige. Who wants to make this story grounded, right? Follow, kind of take, pick up right where No Way Home left off. Yep. Spider Man, no Tony Stark, no money. Mm -hmm. Aunt May's dead. Uncle Ben, everyone's dead. It's just, right. it's just Peter by himself, broken in an apartment. Um, Sony, they they want this to be another multiverse story, because why not? Because the last one works. So they figured, what do you want? You want more multiverse, right? Right. So they want to do another big old multiverse story, and they want to rush this thing out. Marvel wants to take its time and, and make the right story. But either way, Miles Morales is rumored to debut in this movie. So how do you feel about this whole mess of an, uh, news I just dropped on you? 
I think we as a consumer, um, the viewer, um, you know, the people that enjoy the comics, um, I think we suffer through these. It's like two two parents having an argument. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> it really come is. on, really? Yep. Um, um, I, I don't think it's good news, but, but, mm. but ultimately what comes out of this is hopefully a better movie than right. both would have, you know, probably done. Um, I'm not feeling the, the multiverse thing again. No. I think we need to get back to the grounded thing because, you know, what's going to happen? Peter's walking down the street. Nobody remembers him. All of a sudden, you know, the sky's going to open and, <laughs> again, and, you know, Galactus is <laughs> going to come through it and right. Peter has to suit up for no apparent reason whatsoever. Stop giving them these ideas. You know? So I'm not down with that, but, you know, the, hopefully um, it'll, it'll be a better project yeah. um, that evolves out of this thing. What about the last piece of that, Miles being in this either way? I'm excited to see Miles in live action. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Um, yeah. All right. So, Sony and Marvel mm -hmm. still clashing over Spider-Man 4, but Miles is in this either way. I'm giving the clash a thumbs down, and I'm giving <laughs> Miles a thumbs up, you know? So, technically, that's a thumbs down. Ooh. Remember. It is. Yeah. So. You know what? Yeah. Screw it. Thumbs down. Yep. You know? Thumbs down on that one. How about you? Uh, thumbs down. I, it, it's. There's enough fight. There's enough yeah, fighting going on. Just for real. I, I don't know what's going on with Sony and, and, and Marvel. Oh, they're stupid. You know, so there's oh, that. Oh, there's that. <laughs> there's, that's that main. You know, <laughs> Make it, it simple. Yeah, pretty much that main issue that they're stupid. Um, Wonder Man and Ironheart are not canceled. Marvel moving on with these two series mm -hmm. for Disney+. Plus. I'm giving this a thumbs up. Thumbs up. And last but certainly not least, Joker 2 will be a musical with 15 cover songs and maybe some originals. <laughs> giving that a thumbs down. Ugh. Thumbs down. Uh, <laughs> I think they sold that for Musto. Th think of this, 15 cover songs and maybe some originals. It's kind of like we discuss comics and only comics, but sometimes some other stuff, you know? Yeah, but I they did not get that musical from us. <laughs> the musical idea? I, I don't no. know where they come from. That did not come from us. But I mean, just for clarity. I, I just... I, you know what? Just a pass. No more. We'll we'll put a pin in that. It's yep. not, not worth... It's just going to aggravate me. It's going to make me upset. I want to be upset on the show, you right. know? But what if it's good, though? Is there any possibility that it could be good? Yeah, I thought about that, and the reason why I say maybe. Mm -hmm. Now, Lady Gaga's in it, okay? Lady Gaga was in this movie. Um, the Italian movie? Born, no, the one with Bradley Cooper where he's like an artist. Star is Born. Star is Born yep, yep. Which was a musical, mm -hmm. in a way. Well, it wasn't really a musical. They performed some songs. Right. So, may, I, I just, I hope it's not. When, when we hear the word musical, what we think of, like some, you know, every four minutes someone's singing and right. there's you know, Mary Poppins shit. Like, That's a musical. Yeah. I hope it's not like that level of musical. I'm okay if there's some songs in there. So I, I, I so is there, there's a small possibility that it would be good. But I'll, So The Notebook, right, which mm -hmm. I've never seen. I heard no, it was either. good. Okay. Um, was a musical. Mm. Um, I, I've heard a lot of musicals are, are, are good. I just can't bring myself to watch them now lady gaga mm. um i kind of cringed when i first <laughs> heard that she was crossing over into the acting stuff yeah but I, I i've heard that she's done a good job yeah um she also came out in this um uh, italian the movie. gucci one, the right? gucci one. Yep. yeah yeah so i i heard that she did pretty good with that so i'm interested yeah i'm interested so i'm not i'm not gonna shit on her um no. but um you know, so I'm interested in seeing whatever role that she plays. I think she has range. Yes. And I'm cool with that. <clears throat> that's the thing. When I first heard that she was cast as Harley Quinn, I thought, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we were used to the Margot Robbie version. Mm -hmm. She knocked it out of the park. But I'm like, Lady Gaga, because she's a good actress, I'm like, I'm interested in this portrayal. I think, I think she could pull it off. But then when they threw the musical thing out there, I'm like, I don't know. Not I'm I'm... Actually, I'm so cool with Lady Gaga, right? Mm. Even though I don't listen to her music, I know who she yep. is. Essentially, <laughs> you don't listen to her music. That's weird. Nah. <laughs> I um, I know who she is. That's yep. it. Okay. But I'm so cool with her, even though she's following Robbie, um, whatever Margot. What's her name? Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Yeah. Who knocked um Harley Quinn out the park? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually reserving um. A positive, a thumbs up for her portraying that role. Okay, so I'm. So you cool think she'll that. do a good job? Yeah, I think yeah, so. I, I think so too. Um, so we'll see. 
Um, next up, Adrian, we have a segment that we call Hidden Gem. Okay. Yeah. This is your segment. This is where you break down a hidden gem from the comics. And I, I teased this earlier. You have an X-Men theme hidden gem this week. And right. when I, I, I was excited when I saw this one this morning because there's a lot of times where I, you said, me, I have no idea who the hell that person is. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited, too. But this is one where I've always really liked this character. Mm-hmm. We we have seen him portrayed a couple times in live action. Right. One really good, one kind of subpar. Um, and he, he's also, I well, I hope he shows up in X-Men 97. Right. So who is our hidden gem this week? All right, so the hidden gem this week is, so we had this hidden gem in which I went over a range of characters, right? Um, none of them as basic as um, the Human Torch, but <laughs> we also covered some uh, Omega level um, mm-hmm. characters. But now we have this Omega level character review that we're going to be doing so i'm going to go completely left and talk about someone who is you've seen this person um cool power set definitely not omega level but just a good character um and and a strong team person and that person is um nightcrawler kurt Kurt Wagner. wagner Um, so Nightcrawler is pretty much unique across, you know, all of, all of the mutants because he actually looks like something that when you say the word mutant, you Mm -hmm. know, like a, an amalgamation of something. Um, so his back history is that because we all know him, I'm going to go into all the variants because there are many, right? Um, his backstory is pretty much that, you know, he is the product of, uh, Mystique and this woman named Destiny. So Mystique was married to some baron, hooked up with Destiny. She wanted Destiny wanted to have a child. <laughs> Mystique transformed herself, not only transformed herself into a man, but changed her genome, meaning that she changed her sex from female yeah. eggs to male sperm, right? Yeah. To impregnate this uh, Destiny, right? And so she had a child. Shit. And um, <clears throat> the, Kurt was born, you know, blue, hairy, tails, f- you know, two toes, two toes on his feet, mm. you know, three on his hand, weird yellow eyes, all this, all this kind of stuff. So went through this whole thing. Of course, he ended up in a circus. I mean, where else would that <laughs> right. happen, right? <laughs> so ended up in a circus. Uh, everybody pretty much adopted him. But the circus thought that he was essentially – um, a real person dressed up like a demon. I thought it was a costume. Yeah, yeah. They thought it was a costume, which is why he was probably able to get through all that stuff without yeah. being, you know, without everybody like trying to kill him. Badass costume. All the time, right? You, you can't get that costume at Party City. <laughs> no, you can't get that at Party <laughs> City. So um, he eventually, so he had a friend, a childhood friend, which turned out to be um, a, a murdering bastard, pretty much. You Damn. know, he went around like killing kids and stuff like that and um kurt went back you know they they had an um altercation and the 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 childhood friend ended up dying Mm. well because kurt was there because he's the demon everybody thought that he was the one that killed all the kids so another mob scene right so the mob shows up they trying to you know get at kurt and then professor x shows up like he always does at the last minute right yeah um and paralyzed everybody uh, changed their memory of Kurt making him think that making the mob think that Kurt died in this fire that was accidentally set. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he took him into the X-Men. Um, now I, I don't really remember when his powers came. I'm assuming at some point during adolescence, but if, if, you know, fighting his friend wasn't traumatic enough or the mob trying to kill him was traumatic enough. I'm assuming that professor X, um, knew about his powers before he did, mm. and he developed them um, at the uh, X Mansion. So, um, what's what's cool about him is that besides he's just like a cool kid, right? Um, everybody loved him. Um, he was uh, which what is, which is something that's not really discussed in the comics. He's like a devout Catholic. Yep. Uh, even you know he's from Germany, so a really cool character. Um, helped out a lot. He wasn't. He's not a high level uh, mutant as far as a power set. His power sets are he can teleport, 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> initially, he could tell he had a, a range. He could only teleport like two miles, right? And even though his powers can displace, like um, obviously atmosphere, air, and water, it can't displace solid things. So he does have like a built-in kind of a navigational thing to help him with um, not popping up into solid objects. However, he does prefer to um, teleport around places that he's been or seen or he yeah. has some kind of experience with, right? Um, he can also teleport a certain amount of mass. I mean, obviously, he's teleporting people, things right, like that. Right. But that's ex extremely exhausting for him. Um, his hands and feet have like the um, – well, Spider-Man has like these little supposedly hairs or they have like this um, electrostatic bond depending on which version of Spider-Man you're reading and what era you're reading from. But Kurt has like these, or Nightcrawl, he has like these little suctions on the bottom of his, in, on micro suctions in his hands and feet. Okay. So he like can some stick. Spider-Man type shit. Right. So he can actually stick or cling to, mm. like a probably like a Gila monster or some lizard, right? Yeah. Frogs. Um. Nick, he can cling to s most surfaces. Of course, like things like probably, probably glass, which is, you know, pretty much non-porous. Um, he'll have a problem sticking to. Mm -hmm. um, his tail is a third arm, basically. He can use that tail to do pretty much anything. Um, so, I mean, a pretty, he's not like a super powerful guy, but definitely noteworthy, definitely a team player. He spent most of his time, um, he's accomplished, you know, uh, he could fight, you know, pretty yeah. much. Because they all train with like Wolverine and Cyclops and, you know, everybody trains everybody. He and Wolverine were basically the mechanics for the uh, Blackbird, you know, for the for the X Mansion. Yeah. Um, so he he's done other notable things. He pops up here and there. Obviously, just like every X Man, pretty much, they've either died or lost their powers, right? <laughs> right. So he he did both. Um, well, he lost his powers why, when he died, but when he got resurrected at some point, and when he got resurrected, his powers were expanded. Yeah. So now instead of two miles, he can pop anywhere across the globe. Thousands of miles. Really? Yeah. So, but the thing, the way his power works is he basically, he doesn't just disappear from one spot and reappear into another spot. He actually opens a portal to a, another dimension. Yeah. He basically opens a door, steps into another dimension, and then opens another door and exits. Just comes the back dimension. at a different place. Right. Which is where, which is what that, um, so when he, teleports there's like a smoke yeah. and a sound yep so that's the compression between the two dimensions mm. so when he opens that dimension basically smoke or whatever comes out of that dimension instantaneously yeah he enters and that's what he leaves behind when he teleports wow so um it's it's, it's a pretty cool power um i i've always thought you know, he was like a really interesting character. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, in the X Men again, he's not a Cyclops, he's not a Storm. You know, he's not the ever popular Wolverine, right. but he's definitely, you know, uh, a, a very important part of the X Men team. And you're right, I I do hope he shows up in yeah. '97. And I, I actually like the portrayal, um, in what was it X Two? Yes. When he he was um somebody took over his mind yep. and he was trying to kill the president. That yep. was a it was an awesome display of his powers that and pretty much he's the only one that they've done well in, in live action. Mm -hmm. That was a cool display of his power. Yeah, dude, that, that was awesome. That was X two. It was Alan Cumming who played, right. um, Nightcrawler and that began, it was like the opening scene of the movie yep. Yep. and where he's, he's just jumping through the white house, taking out the, um, secret service. Yep. And then he's got the president on the desk and he grabs like a knife with his tail or whatever. Right. And then he gets shot, at, yep. you know, which stops him. Mm -hmm. But um, that was when Stryker was controlling him. Remember they had that, yep, that shit yep. on the back of their neck where he mm -hmm. dropped that um, whatever that substance was that would just control people. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that that was a that – I really liked – and just the, the the look in that movie. Yeah. Like the um, – they're not – almost like tattoos almost on the face. Yes. The really dark, dark um, – like dark blue skin. Mm -hmm. And we did see some of his faith because you mentioned he was, you know, devout – I'm Catholic. Right. There's a point in the movie, I think, after that scene where he um he runs away, the X Men go to locate him and they find him in a, a church somewhere, like in Boston area right, or right. whatnot. Maybe it's Boston, mm -hmm. but it's definitely um a little bit away from the mansion. Right, right. But yeah, that was a great portrayal. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, there was something else where, um, was it Mystique and he and Mystique went to get Angel, who was fighting in some kind of. I think when they had that horrible portrayal of uh, oh, apocalypse or whatever. Oh yeah, in um, X three, I think. Yeah, he they they went. He, um, Angel was in some ring or something. Yes, you know, f- you know, fighting. Yeah, they said cage matches or whatever. So he was involved in that. That's so that was right. pretty cool. Too. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Was you, you saw them on screen, Mystique and Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. It was kind of one of those like if you know, you know moments. Exactly. Right? Like they didn't exactly. say it in the movie. Exactly, mother, uh, mother and son kind of a deal. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that that was pretty cool. I, I need to. We probably need to do some on Mystique because she's Dude. that makes her pretty old. Man. Yeah, she's so, badass. Yeah. We definitely should do something on Mystique. And there's two portrayals of Mystique. You right. got the, you know, the Jennifer Lawrence. You got the Rebe- Rebecca Romaine, right. which I think is top tier. Oh, absolutely. And you got the Jennifer Lawrence, which is white dog shit. You know? <laughs> white dog shit, Adrian, is like, it's old. It turns white. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I know you've seen it. It's like sits outside for a long time and it starts to turn white. So wow. it's worse than regular wow. dog shit. Yeah. That's like, that's like petrified shit, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Definitely. But, dude, yeah, that's a, is, is this like a little teaser for a hidden gem in the future, Adrian? Is this a mystique teaser? I I think it might be. You'll have to, you know, stay tuned. Stay you know? tuned. Stay tuned. But this is a great hidden gem. I've Again, I've always liked the Nightcrawler character. Mm-hmm. I like his um his his outfit and his costume, too, the, the black and red deal right, with right. the little kind of V on it or yep. whatnot. And there's been several different versions, but he always has a pretty cool look. Right, right. The tail. What's up with the tail being? It's almost like an arrow. Like, any is it? Is it strong enough to like penetrate people's skin? Or I've never seen it, but I'm assuming so. Yeah. I mean, if he can, if that's basically an arm, I mean, it would be like saying, well, okay, your hand has five fingers on it, mm-hmm. but you can close them and put them to a point and like stab somebody in the neck or something like. So I'm assuming it's yeah. you know, the same, you know, the same mechanics. Yeah. Yeah, no, he, cool character. He actually was in um, X Men, the animated series. Mm-hmm. There was an episode where they find him in a church, right. obviously. Um, I f- and I forget. I want to say maybe it's Wolverine, Storms. A handful of them go to get him, kind of similar to what they did in X Two. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is an episode. I'll, I'll look it up and um, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. I'll, I'll let everybody know what episode it was, or you can actually just use the Google machine and check it out yourself. There you go. Or maybe in between us talking, I'll figure it out one or the other. Hey, it's a mystery. We don't know what will happen. <clears throat> right. But what what I do know, um, and I know what's going to happen next, Adrian. We're so. going to do a little watch along here of the first little teaser for the Penguin movie, or not movie, the Penguin series. So this is part of Matt Reeves' Batman, the Batman universe, right, which your boy, as the fans call him, Adrian, Battinson, okay? Battinson. Battinson. Um, but this universe, well, now we, we, we do know that the Batman 2 is not coming out until, like, 2026. That just got pushed back some more, unfortunately. Um, but to hold us over until that happens, Adrian, we have The Penguin. This show is coming out later this year, so we're going to do a little watch along here with everyone. Um, you've not seen this trailer yet? Uh, well, no, I don't think I have. All right, well, we're going to find out. Are you ready? I'm ready. That classic Gotham classic look right there. Right? Classic man, you can barely see, make out any shape right. because it's so dark. Rex Calabrese. He was a big deal. He helped people. If you saw you on the street, go out there. The Maserati. When I'm 14 or something, he has a heart attack and dies. Still it's just crazy that that's Colin Farrell. Right. <laughs> My neighborhood. They told Parade in his honor. I mean, some Sopranos vibes, yep. Adrian. Yep. Parade. Well, it was a fancy. Falcone's office. But it was a gesture. To show love. For what he meant. to be remembered like that wow 
Nice. Thank God it's not a musical. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's that. Right. Dude, I mean, I'm like, I was going to react, but I'm kind of speechless. This, this yeah. looks good. Yeah, it does. Um, Echo did, too. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I got a feeling uh, that this will be better than Echo. I got a feeling. Let's, um, let's hope so. That's not saying much. But, dude, this thing, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This is... It looks very grounded. It looks mm-hmm. very Sopranos esque, um, you know. And I, and I did what, when we when I first saw the Batman, I got a little Tony Soprano vibe from you know Colin um, Farrell's um, Penguin portrayal yeah. in a good way. I thought he I thought he did a great. So, you know, it sounds like what we know so far. There's some some mobster that um, Ozzy kind of looks up to that passed when he was young, and I guess that's who he's kind of trying to embody himself after. He wants to be remembered, respected. So he he and you know at the end of the Batman, um, Falcone Carmine Falcone's killed. So now Penguin is kind of moving into that mob boss type. Like the, the there's an opening, he's stepping in. I think that's what this show is going to be about: is him uh-huh. kind of taking over the um, Gotham Underground. Okay. Which in the comics, I mean, that's the thing. Like most people are used to the Penguin portrayal of Danny DeVito, right. where he's an actual like mutated Penguin, right. which was cool for that movie. But I mean, that's not who he's was in the comics penguins he does he is deformed but he's always been a mob boss you know pretty i mean penguin's a gangster like he's yeah. he's no bullshit yeah. um so i, I think it's going to be really cool to see him go from you know being ozzy to the penguin right. in this show um i wonder if we if we'll get a batman cameo what do you think um hopeful yeah um i i think you almost can, well you don't have to no, um, but would be I, nice. I, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be cool. I don't. I don't think he should be like you know in every episode, but like if there's a, a one or two instances where he's just there, a scene or two, mm-hmm. you know, something small. I'm thinking like um, as he develops, mm-hmm. you know, as the penguin, like toward the end yes. of whatever the movie is, you know, um, you know, because there's going to be rumors of, of the Batman coming mm-hmm. around. Maybe you know the Batman silhouette up on a, up on a building or something, looking down at yep. him. I'm thinking something like that. If he does show up, yeah, almost like. As he progresses through this series, he becomes a big enough problem till he gets on Batman's right. radar. Exactly. And maybe it ends with those two kind of crossing paths, which would lead to Batman 2. You know? Right. Dude, we're just or, giving him all or kinds Pink, of ideas. Or, or Penguin 2. True. That's the thing. Yeah, if this thing does well, it, right. they, we could have more seasons, you know. Right. Hopefully they don't fire the writer like X-Men 97, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking uh, forward to this, dude. Yeah. I think it, I think it looks good. Um, I Like I said, I enjoyed his portrayal in the Batman and you know, I mean, you know how I feel about the Batman. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Did you know I liked the movie a lot, Adrian? Do you remember that? Or um, no? <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't recall you ever no. telling me about the movie. No, <laughs> not at not all. once. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anything, you know, so. continuing this universe, I'm all there for. Yeah. So looking forward to that. And that'll be later this year. So that should hold us over until 2026 when the next movie comes out. I, I, I remember the. Um, Break out my infrared goggles when, when this show comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little dark, huh? Yeah, it's just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, so, there you have it. The Penguin teaser trailer. Um, let us know. Are you guys looking forward to this? Do you like it? Do you not? Is this a sign of DC breaking, you know, waking up from their sabbatical? Maybe. Or maybe this is just like a little um, little teaser and then Marvel's going to come back in and kick their ass again. Probably that one. It's but probably that one. Yeah, most likely. So, you know what we got next, Adrian? What's that? We got agree to disagree. Okay. This is where I rapid fire 10. I got 10 again this week. 10 of my opinions. And I just, I need to clarify because sometimes, you know, I get un, un, um, unjustfully held to these opinions. So mm-hmm. this is just how I'm feeling this morning, Adrian. Okay. <laughs> A lot of times, to be honest with you, I, I come up with these right on the spot as we're getting <laughs> ready for the show because th- th- I could flip flop. There's something I may say today that next week I may say the opposite. Or you might make up something as you're spitting out the 10. That might be an that's 11. True. Yeah, it might be or an 11. Might change it. You never know. You, anything can happen here on Only Comics. That, that should be like our new slogan. Anything, right. can anything can happen. Anything can happen. Except for a box of Joe being here. Because obviously that's not going to happen. Oh, my God. Except that. That has not happened yet. So they will not be part of Agree to Disagree. So, all right. Are you ready? Ready. All right. Number one. Marvel should have Spider-Man and Avengers cameo in X-Men 97. I think that would be cool. I agree. Agree. Marvel should listen to me and create the Marvel Animated Universe, the MAU. I agree. Cyclops is the walking embodiment of cringe. Who is cringe? Cringe. Like, he's cringy. 
Corny. Is it, oh, <laughs> well, just say corny then, dude. <laughs> it's a uh, new yes, word, Adrian. Yes. Wow. <laughs> nah. So you I agree. agree. You agree. <laughs> Joker 2 should not be a musical. I agree. You should only drive in the left lane if you're passing people. <laughs> <laughs> agree. And don't pace the person in the right lane. That if you too. Do. Yes. Storm would defeat Wonder Woman. Agree. Jersey Mike's is better than Subway. Disagree. Dan Schneider should rot in jail with Harvey Weinstein <laughs> and R. Kelly. <laughs> well, is Harvey rotting in jail or yeah. on the ground? I, where is he at? I think Weinstein's in jail. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, agree. <laughs> the Penguin will be better than Echo. Uh, agree. Rebecca Romaine's portrayal of Mystique is leaps and bounds better than Jennifer Lawrence. Leaps and bounds. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, those two actresses' names shouldn't even be in the same <laughs> sentence Damn. when it comes to Mystique. Yes. I'm not shitting on either one of them. I mean, I'm definitely not shitting on Rebecca um, Romaine, but right. um, the other chick, yeah, um, yeah, they, the name shouldn't be be both identified as with Mystique in the same mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. But, I mean, I agree. Jennifer Lawrence is a great actress. There's sure. a lot of cool things she's in, the whole um, Hunger Games series. She yep, knocked yep, that shit yep. out of the park. But when it comes to our comics and it comes to our mutants, stay the fuck away. Right. No right. offense. Respectfully, as they say. Hey, respectfully. So, there you go. Well, that was Agree to Disagree. The real fun starts now, though, Adrian, where our viewers let us know if they agree or disagree. Sometimes they don't agree with us. You know that. Uh, Of course. That's why we have a segment called We Respond. Basically, (laughs) that segment was birthed from this segment, you know? If this segment was Mystique, then We Respond would be Nightcrawler. Uh, Okay. There you have it. So, speaking of mutants, Adrian, Mm. um, speaking of Storm kicking the shit out of Wonder Woman, our Omega-level mutant series, Storm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we had Magneto last week, right? Right. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was good timing. We we watched X-Men 97, which we'll get into next, but there's a lot of Magneto in there. There's a lot of Storm in there. Right. And um, the reason that I suggested Storm this week was in watching X-Men 97, there's a scene, and we'll we'll talk about this a little more later, where Storm shows up, there's some Sentinels, and these Sentinels have some detection, um, you know, system or whatnot, and they detect that she's an Omega-level threat, and they're like, there's like a warning alarm going off, like, right. oh, shit, right. Omega-level's here. Well, they didn't know who it was. You said they detected that she was mm. Omega. So they just knew that an Omega-level mutant was inbound. Correct. Yeah, no idea who it was. So the Sentinels were shook, right? right. And then Storm comes up, and she does her thing, man. Mm-hmm. But um, so I, when, when I saw that, I was like, She's got to be the Omega level this sure. week. And there's about, um, I, I didn't clarify that number, somewhere around 20 um, Omega level, confirmed by Marvel, Omega level mutants, uh-huh. right? So we did Magneto. You had Iceman a few weeks ago. Right. E- even before we created the the, the segment, yep. the Omega level. So an right. Omega level mutant talked about right before. So, yeah, uh, Iceman. Yeah, we, it's like you predicted the future. Ah, that's what, that's that's what, what we, we do, do here. We move back and forth through the timeline, you know? <laughs> so it's, and we, we did confirm last week we're mutants. So, right. you know, hey, we got, there there's go. that. Um, but Storm, dude, Storm's an old character. She, um, yeah. 1975, she mm-hmm. debuted. She was um, outside of Misty, what the hell's her name? Misty something. Storm, Misty Knight. Storm is the first black female character in the comics. Right. That's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Um, and I love that she's mm-hmm. also a mega level, mm-hmm. which um, I didn't know that till recently. Did you always know that? I didn't. I knew she was powerful. Yeah. Um, in doing some research, I didn't realize how powerful she was, just like I didn't realize how powerful Iceman was. Mm-hmm. I mean, both cool things. Well, you know how powerful Magneto is. Right. But Storm is just awesome. Dude. Yeah, she's uh, a beast. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of break through her, her early years a little bit, and then I'm a, I'll am turn it over to you for the powers because mm-hmm. you you got your, you know, your top tier. That's one of your mutant abilities, by the way, <laughs> just dissecting other mutants' powers, you, you know. But uh, Storm was born. She's born in New York City. She's a child of a, a Kenyan tribal princess and then, I guess, an American photographer, right? Um, when she was young, six months old, parents moved to um, Egypt, um, Cairo. And through, I think she was maybe five, six years later, her parents were killed. And th- this is a big piece of Storm's identity. Um, there was a fighter jet crashed into their house, killed both parents, right. and they're buried under a bunch of rubble or whatnot. Right. And this, she survived, but this is where she developed her intense um, claustrophobia, right. Right. which we've seen this um, a lot in X Men, the animated series. There's several scenes where they're in a, I remember one very early on in the first season where they're fighting, I think they're fighting Sentinels, and there's a building that collapses, um, and Storm's trying to hold it up, 
Um, and she starts panicking because, you know, her claustrophobia kicks right. in and it falls on and, and she gets flashbacks of being a little girl or whatnot. Um, so I, I never, I, until we did this deep dive, I didn't know that it stemmed from her parents being killed. Well, uh, well it wasn't just that she was killed. Uh, I mean, her parents were killed. I mean, she was buried under tons of rubble next to their dead bodies right. for days at a time. Yeah. So it, it's not, it's not like they just got taken away. Yeah. She's just sitting there marinating. With Damn. these bodies until, you know, she, she was able to, you know, get freed or whatever. Right. Then she, uh, and that, that'll, that'll screw you up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, we still see to, you know, this day in the comics. Um, but she, she ends up being um, orphan, right? And then she learns, she kind of becomes a little pickpocket. And right. we, we saw some of this in X-Men Apocalypse. Right. Where um, we see her in Egypt or whatnot. We see her in the alleys being a, um, kind of a pickpocket, little thief. Mm -hmm. um, and... She, um, I guess she kind of crosses paths with Professor Xavier back then. Mm -hmm. He's like a victim of her, um, which is odd because he's a telepath. So I don't know how he didn't see that coming. Right. But um, anyway, this she ends up um, traveling to the Serengeti where she meets T'Challa. Because mm -hmm. in the comics, they, they're married at some point. Correct. Which this is another reason why I say they should have continued um, on with the Absolutely. character. Because I'd love to see that union on screen. Right. There's some pretty cool comics where they're together. Yep. And that, that's the thing, you, when you, you, most people think about Storm, they think about, you know, Storm, the X-Men, yeah, she controls power, but, dude, she's like, she's the, you know, what, the queen of Wakanda at, at some point. Correct. Being with T'Challa, and she, and also, again, a badass. Right. Um, so, any, any um, were you a fan of their marriage in the comics? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, her heritage made her more accepted in Wakanda. Right. Um, she's Kenyan. Because, well, not only that, but she's from a long line of, you know, priestesses, basically. Mm -hmm. or, or, or royalty, yeah. So, so, so she's, she's kind of got that royalty. And specifically since, I guess, the, the fall of Atlantis, right? Mm -hmm. um, all the tribal women within that bloodline, they've been, been kind of marked with that, um, the white hair yeah. and the blue eyes. Okay. Um, which for her, when she uses her powers, turn you know, completely white. Mm -hmm. um, so when she got with T'Challa um, and in Wakanda, that whole lineage made her more acceptable yeah. as a, not just a, you know, like a side piece, but, right. you know, another queen level person, you know. So they didn't really the treat her as an outsider. No, no. Because of where she came from. Right. She, she was respected from the beginning, basically. Yeah. You know? But I, I didn't know this, that they met as teenagers, yeah. kind of connected, and then went their separate ways. Yep. Even though they had like really strong feelings for each other, mm -hmm. and then in the Serengeti is where she first like developed or learned how to control her mutant powers. It was like a drought or something, I think, and then she commanded rain for days or whatever. Yeah. Um. So and that so basically, teenager develops these powers. She's an orphan on her own, and then I read this that she was um, she was worshipped as a rain goddess mm -hmm. in an African tribe. Mm -hmm. She practiced nudism and spirituality. Right. And then around that time was when she was recruited by Xavier to join the X-Men. Right. At one point, um, you know, after all that, <clears throat> she actually, she was born, like I said, I think in Kenya, but they moved to Brooklyn. I mean, uh, to Harlem first. Yeah. And then they went to Egypt, which is where the accident happened. Right. So during that period, she learned, she did the, you know, the, the nudism stuff. Mm -hmm. So at some point when she got back to, you know, like a city or whatever, she thought that, I mean, she had practices for so long, I'm assuming mm -hmm. like since early childhood, that she thought that wearing clothes was absurd. Yeah. You know, so it was at that level. Got it, got it. Um, she uh, became really close friends with Jean Grey mm -hmm. when she joined the X-Men. Mm -hmm. And th there's several comics, and this has even happened in the animated series, where she takes over as leader at, of the X-Men. Sure. Like, Xavier realized her leadership abilities early on, and there's a time where she kind of takes over from Cyclops, which is pretty cool. Right. Well, they actually kind of fracture, and this is one of Xavier's weaknesses, yep. right? You know, he's he's always he always wants to be the you know, you know goody two shoes, um, so which wouldn't happen under Magneto's leadership. Right. You know, I, Magneto would iron fist everybody. Absolutely. Right? So there wouldn't be no splinter cell. So there was actually a role faction of the X-Men. There was yeah, there a two teams Cyclops, at once, right? um, well, a faction of the yeah. X-Men, you know, because at some point Professor, oh, well, obviously died at some yeah. point, right? So, yeah, there was, like, different factions besides the fact that, you know, she took on leadership roles within the X-Men mm -hmm. when Xavier was still there. Yeah, no, she was a badass leader, too. Oh, yeah. And there was a point where um, 
and I think this is what you're talking about in the comics where there were two X-Men comics running at the same time. There was mm-hmm. a blue team and a gold team. Right. And Cyclops, I'm pretty sure, led the blue team and Storm led the gold team. Mm. And they were they would cross paths sometimes, but they were pretty much doing their own thing for a while. Right. Um, which is, I mean, part of it was because how popular the X-Men comics were. So, like, shit, let's right. double dip on these guys, right? Exactly. But to your point, there was a kind of a fracture in the X-Men. Um, but I, I've always been a fan of her, especially in the comics. Movies, I don't think they've done her justice yet. No, um, not at all. There's also a comic where she fights Kalisto and becomes the ruler of the Morlocks. Yep. And this is another one that, talking about X-Men 97, the animated series, there's, a, a I think, a two- mm-hmm. Um, episode story where this happens. Yes, the Morlocks are there and they fight down like in the um, you know the the un- underground or whatnot. But it's pretty cool um, episode. Yeah. Even even with those shitty animations from you know <laughs> nine thirty some years ago. Right. But there was a pretty cool fight between her and Callisto, and she takes over as the Morlock leader. All right. I mean, she's taken over a bunch of stuff. You know, mm-hmm. besides taking over team leader in the X Men, the Morlocks. Um, what else? She, um, and in some future version. Um, she takes over. She's part of this council. Yeah. Um, Croquet or something like that. Um, she's part of the nine of this round table. Mm. And they have the ability to, like, if you die, they can resurrect you and all this other kind of stuff. So she was an Omega level mutant there. Yeah. And at some point, um, there was one of the guys that challenged her, you know, for this seat. Mm-hmm. And he stripped his, his mutant power because um, the nine that sits at this table, yeah. you have to be an Omega level or above just okay. to sit on the council. And he challenged her seat. And his power was that he could change your DNA on the spot, like instant, just a thought. Mm. So she comes down to, to, to meet the challenge. He changes her into the, to this, like, monster, strips her of her power, makes her into this monster, some crazy arm, deformed her face, everything. Damn. And he, she still beat his ass. Yeah. And she stabbed him <laughs> in the heart, which he didn't expect, because he thought that she is only her power. And she has proven that time and time and time again that, uh, you know, Aurora Monroe is not just Storm. She's also a, a, a Aurora Monroe. Right. Trained by Wolverine, trained with Cyclops. I'm sure she's trained with Captain America mm-hmm. in, in the Avengers. Um, she was a street thief. So she has a lot of, you know, talents, outs, uh, combat, uh, hand-to-hand combat experience outside of her powers, which also makes her a badass. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the... And we're gonna get into X Men ninety seven a little bit, but the storyline where she gets shot, mm-hmm. that models a story that happens in the comics back in the eighties, right. with a similar weapon. By Gyrick is the one that fires it uh, in the comics, mm-hmm. and the inventor of the weapon was Forge, right? Which was that was a hidden gem as well, right? Which also hooked up with Storm, exactly. You know, at some point, right after So that. he had to keep that away from her, yes. For some at some point, I, I forget. She that finds if she, out, yeah. Though. She finds, and out, that's yeah. when she leaves him, yeah. yeah. Um, so then, and she kind of leaves the X-Men for a little bit, but there's, um, there's a, a story in the comics. I, I talk about this a lot on here, House of M yep. where Scarlet Witch basically changes the whole face of the comics. Like, you know, she says she, no more mutants and 90% of the mutants lo- le- lose their powers. Storm leaves the X-Men there. That's when she, um, goes back to Wakanda and rekindles her little relationship with the child and marries him. Mm-hmm. So that I guess was kind of this stem you know or the spawn of her going back and actually becoming the queen of wakanda so that didn't happen she may have never went back and got with t'challa right. again right. um so that that was pretty cool and you know and and i mean there, there's so many different um comics that she plays a big part and that's what i like about the character too. she's always been in the x-men like she's always been right. in some comic like storm's always there mm-hmm. you know i don't know that they've done a, a lot of runs of like just her own story but she's always in a lot of other comics and plays right. a pretty big role. Right. What about uh, from the power standpoint, Adrian? Obviously, weather control, but um, I mean, what what makes her an Omega level mutant? All right. So, doing a deep dive on this character, right? Just like Magneto. All right. So, a an Omega level character is someone who basically has no upper limit mm-hmm. to their power. Right. Now, interestingly, I discovered. No, I didn't discover. <laughs> this is not. Christopher Columbus thing. Are you pulling a Christopher it was, Columbus? It was it was brought to my attention in my um, research mm-hmm. that what the one thing that uh, Omega level mutants the capability that they have is the ability to manipulate things at a molecular level. Okay. So Magneto, 
Iceman, um, now Storm, right? So we all know her, and and especially um, live action has like really uh, shit on her powers, right? Shit, yeah. You know, she's like she can you know cu- bring some wind, you know, some some lightning, <laughs> you know, but she's got to wait. It takes forty five seconds, you know, to do some lightning, right. which is ridiculous, you know. But her 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 ability is worldwide. Anywhere there's an atmosphere. Um, she can display her powers, which means that she's not limited to planet Earth, right? Mm-hmm. So again, we know her for you know, uh, you know, moving some wind and some and some electricity. However, she's also her powers also goes into the electromagnetism yeah. thing, area because she can generate and blast out you know lightning bolts from her body, right? Mm-hmm. Besides summoning them from the, the clouds, um, she can create hurricanes, tsunamis. Uh, tornadoes, but she can also stop those things as well, right? Right. Um, she can um, uh, manipulate the electricity to run through your brain. She can give you a brain an- aneurysm, you know, things like that. She can suck all the oxygen out of your body, right? Sure. Um, so she can she can uh, control weather to um, water to to some degree. She can control the atmosphere, the light to a degree, to where she can become almost transparent or even almost invisible. To, um, to the human eye. Yeah. Um, and this is where her powers really get off, just kind of go off the scale. She can pull atmosphere from the earth and fly around in space, unaided by uh, mechanics. She Shit. can envelop herself with, you know, random hydrogen molecules or whatever yeah. um, so that she can breathe out in space, right? So, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. She can manipulate um, not only you know, wind and stuff on Earth, but she can also manipulate solar winds, cosmic winds. So that takes her all out in space and everything that's around. So like every other uh, omega level mutant, she's tied to the universe. She's not just tied to one place. And the bigger the space, like if she was on Saturn or whatever, whatever atmosphere is there, that's just more fuel for her to manipulate. She, um, when she, they got, um, like if she gets on, uh, on a different planet, Whatever resources are there, as long as she has and she can, and, and this is where w- what I don't like about what uh, the writers, they always have some way to limit people, mm-hmm. right? So her claustrophobia. Right. So really, you know, kind of like uh, John, the, uh, the, the Martian Manhunter, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you light a match and he goes, <laughs> sp- starts spazzing out, <laughs> right? Put her in a box and she's done, you know, which is kind of sad. Mm-hmm. But those are the kind of things that make her that omega level. I mean, at some point when they, they show like a future version of storm, she's real old and um, she starts opening up black holes, dude, out in space, wow. swallowing up planets and stuff like that. War worlds and stuff like that. Yeah. So she is just off the chains. Um, I, I, they definitely have not portrayed her properly oh, in, in God, the movies, no. <laughs> but you have to watch, you have to read about her, you know, for many years to see the, the, they understand the full scope of her powers, and even in the comics. Yeah, you know, I mean, they they tap into some stuff, but dude, to be able to instantly flash freeze anything, mm-hmm. like in X Men ninety seven, uh, uh, Omega Eleven mutant detected. What does she do? She comes in and she's freezing the 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 sand on the ground. Right, <laughs> right? that's some awesome stuff. Yeah, so she's definitely up there. Uh, she definitely has no limits. But the thing about that's really important about her is that she's also a street fighter. Mm-hmm. So even without her powers, which oh, has yeah, been... Oh, she's still up your ass. Oh, yeah. So if she's been stripped of these powers, right? Yeah. She's still, a, you know, a danger to anybody. Mm-hmm. And doesn't she... Um, She can do some magic, too, right? Some witchcraft type right. shit, too? Right, Like, maybe not to the level of, like, Scarlet Witch, and these, but she also ha- can kind of, you know, go that w- route as well. Right. She is... She is... Um, Her lineage is witches, sorcerers. Yeah. You know, so that's what that's her whole thing. So she has a psionic um, connection with, you know, everything around her, mm. which which is when, like, uh, X-Men 97, she loses her power, or when this other character challenged her and changed her DNA. Yeah. One of the first things that she'll say is, I can't feel, like, the wind, I can't right, feel right. this. So she is detached from. Yeah. So she has a psionic at a molecular level with all things around her, which is how that she can manipulate these things. Damn. And it's like, 
this is instantaneous stuff. Yeah. Right? It's not like in the movies where it takes 45 seconds for her to conjure up a win. Right. I mean, she can just whip up stuff, you know, immediately. Well, they, they got to have a little speech. They got to, you know, take Halle Berry and have her slowly go up in the air and have her hair blow around mm-hmm. and the eyes turn white. They have to, you know, they have to make her look good. That's uh, why. Whatever. You know, slow it down for the film. <laughs> exactly. Make the movie longer without doing anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, she was, um, somebody came up behind her one time and amped her, her powers, right? So she kind of lost control of it. Mm-hmm. A few weeks ago, we had a, uh, a discussion about somebody brought up, you know, Black Bolt uh, destroyed himself because yeah, his, his mouth was mouth closed was so and he shut. murmured or whatever. Well, unlike Black Bolt, <laughs> <laughs> which is BS, right? Right. Um, so this person came up behind her and amped her powers up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she's getting struck by her own lightning. Her yeah. lightning, well, lightning the temperature of lightning is as is equal to or as hot as the surface of the sun. So she's getting struck multiple times by her own lightning and her body's just, you know, like nothing. Like nothing. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, her body is conditioned. So when she flies, you know, because she uses, um, she manip- manipulates the wind to move her through space. Mm-hmm. Well, her body is such that it can withstand the rigors of that movement. And uh, the the pressures and all that other stuff that's involved. Yeah. So and and I think and when she went to, uh, she became like uh, she was on this council. Yeah. She actually, I think she moved herself from one planet to another one because she wanted to show. It was like a show of force because they thought that she was weak, and instead of coming in on a ship like everybody else, she just moved herself. So she's Damn. badass, dude. Yeah. Dude, I, I mean, the more you talk about her, I'm starting to feel like she would solo the Justice League, you know? <laughs> Maybe that's a stretch, but I mean, uh, she'd give them a run for their money. Right, yeah, yeah. You know? You know, uh, you know, um, take some of Batman's uh, kryptonite dust, yeah. roll it around, that takes care of Superman. Yeah, right? there you go. Flash can't see in, 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 a, in a, right. a storm if she brings in fog or whatever. Right. I mean, I'm sure he can tornado it out, but Maybe. You know, it, it'll be a challenge. Yeah. But she should get run for a Yeah, she's anyway. maybe not Phoenix level, but she, I mean, dude, she'd kick some serious ass. Yeah. Now, um, talk about the live action portrayals. Like, dude, the, the freaking, ha- like, again, kind of the same thing I said about Jennifer Lawrence. Halle Berry, great actress. Uh-huh. I love her in a lot of movies. Monsters Ball is a good one. Yep, yep. Um, but her not playing Storm, <laughs> not that one. Not <laughs> her playing Storm, dude, was atrocious. Yeah. Like, horrible. Um, and then the other uh, was Alexandra Shipp, who played her in the um, shittier X-Men movies, which I think was a, I think her portrayal was better Yes. I think what her, what she did was good. I think the way the character was written in the story wasn't the best. Correct. Um, because we, now this was young Storm, right? So mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been when she re- realized the full potential of her powers. So that it's also a different version of Storm. Uh-huh. But I thought that that one was cool. I would have liked to see develop more, um, you know, but the Halle, Halle Berry one was just god awful. Yeah, it was yeah. right up there with the Jennifer Lawrence Mystique. Imagine if they were in the same movie. <laughs> um, should should Halle Berry just not do any kind of because she was Catwoman too? Oh my God! Right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Remember yeah, that? that was yeah, that was like DC. Like, oh, you guys screwed up a movie with Halle Berry. Watch this. Watch <laughs> what we're gonna do. <laughs> I got one for you. Uh, um, so, I, I, I'm gonna play a little game here, Adrian. Have a little fun with Storm. All right. Okay. Storm's married to T'Challa at some point in the comics. They actually get um, they they split up during. Um, I think it's uh, Secret Wars or maybe Secret Invasion. One of those comics, they they um, they get divorced. But that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Storm versus T'Challa. Okay, a little um, little back and forth. So I'm going to throw a few um, I'm gonna thro- throw a few questions your way, and you're going to answer yep. them for us all. Okay. So yep. number one, who would win in a fight, Storm or T'Challa? Storm. Yeah, I, think I agree, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Who's got the cooler costume? Storm. Well, know. which one? Which costume are we talking about before um, T'Challa? I'm gonna go with T'Challa. I mean, you get the the basic Black Panther um, versus the the classic white and gold Storm. Okay, I go. I I agree with T'Challa. That. Okay. Yeah, yeah, T'Challa. Who's got the cooler powers? <laughs> Storm. Storm. Yeah, without a doubt, dude. Without a doubt. Um, who's been portrayed better on screen? T'Challa. Obviously T'Challa. Yeah. So a little split down the middle, but that I mean, dude, you're T'Challa. If Storm, if your wife says take out the trash, bro, you don't you don't say five minutes, bro. You can get your ass whooped. <laughs> It'll be simple. All she got to do is like suck the air out of his lungs. Exactly. He's yeah, he's, he's got no. Yeah, damn, dude, he can't do shit. Simple. 
Right. Simple. He wants to go hang out with the boys. She don't want him to. He can't say anything. Right. <laughs> uh, but great, great uh, Omega level mutant series. I'm liking this series, Adrian. Yeah. I'm yeah, interested cool. to see who's um going to be on here next week. So we had Magneto last week. If you missed that, check out that past episode on YouTube and Storm this week. Now we're gonna um, venture into some Secret Wars, Adrian. Okay. This was um this was your first time reading the 2015 version, right? Correct. You read the older one recently, and you read you read it back in the day as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I read it back um, even like in the Marvel Universe days. Yeah. So yeah, I was it was pretty cool. Got it. Which one do you think's better now that you've read them both? I think the twi- uh, the newer one is. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty cool. I, I was actually surprised. It was a completely yeah. different spin on it. It, but was. it was cool. But I, I like after reading. I don't know if you felt this way, but I I understand why it was called Secret Wars. Like it's not a reboot. It's right. not a remake, but it kind of hits a lot of the same beats. Did you right. feel that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this one, Doctor Doom plays a big part of this. You know, um, Molecule Man does as well, right? Well, Molecule Man was the man. Yes, he was in the whole thing. Yes, I mean Doom was the, in the forefront. But Molecule Man, yep. which is should be that's another Omega level character we need to discuss. Right. Yeah. Is there? I mean, we, there's Omega level mutants, but is is there a distinction in Marvel where Omega level applies to non mutants? No, I don't think so. No, we're at the I, I, think up. I, I, I just think it's Omega level mutant. Um, I'm not sure of um, Molecule Man's origins. Yeah. But there's got to be a, um, I mean, there's got to be characters that are not mutants that also have no cap to their powers, right? Oh, that's plenty, dude. Yeah, he's one of them. Yeah. Um, but you're right. The, I, the I don't Beyonder. Know yep. Um, the the Watcher. I mean, Santa Claus. I mean, he's Santa not Claus. Marvel, but you know, still. Santa Claus um, is a mutant. You confirm that. Oh, uh, you're right. On your hidden gem. Yep. yep Look at that. Yep. But he's not Marvel. I thought he was. No. Yeah, you said Cerebro said he was the most powerful mutant. You're right. We gotta go back in time here, Adrian. Go back yeah. in time, yeah. dude. <laughs> I've gone through so many. I'm I'm forgetting stuff. Yeah, now. exactly. I mean, maybe you were thinking of the Easter Bunny. <laughs> I have forgotten more than most people know. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still a wealth of knowledge, Adrian. Um, but Doom, oh, yeah. you're a big fan of Doctor Doom, yep. right? How how did you feel about him being kind of the forefront of the story? I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Um, Doom is always. I mean, ever since I saw that comic where he just rolled up on a scene on a bear dude i was like <laughs> this dude is just he's psycho yeah he's psycho yeah um and really it's it all stems from his the, i think the disfigurement of his face mm-hmm. um but anyway we get into that yes and a lot of this story stemmed from his jealousy uh, of, of richards reed richards still yep. after all of these years right all, that, yep. um so we we see in the beginning of this starts with an incursion and this is why i've said this before on, on the podcast that the Avengers Secret Wars movie is the perfect point, perfect time for the MCU to reboot the MCU. Right. And then after reading this story, it makes perfect sense as to how they could do it. We've heard about incursions in the MCU, right? Mm-hmm. And Doctor Strange, they talk about the universe is basically colliding into each other. And that's what's happening in this story. Right. And there's two left. There's Earth 1610 and Earth 616. Right. 616 is like the main continuity that we've had for years. And then the other one is um, the ultimate universe where that's where um, Nick Fury uh, the, is modeled after Samuel L. Jackson. Because in the other universe, it's Nick Fury, white dude with the um, you know little gray right. spots here. So um, six uh, or 1610 is also where Miles Morales stems from. Correct. So, the, and this takes place a little bit after the Spider-Verse story in the comics. So Miles and Peter have already crossed paths. Um, but they're in different universes. So I I really like the opening, the first issue, mm-hmm. where you see the, the two universes kind of colliding. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, we, we see some back and forth between Nick Fury, and he's saying Reed Richards, but it's this dude with this helmet on. Right. <laughs> the Maker, right. which is like an evolved version of Reed, which was pretty cool. Right. Um, and they're basically attacking each other. One universe is attacking the other. Mm-hmm. And they realize pretty quickly that they fail, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, we we also see Cyclops merge with the Phoenix Force right. in this. Now, you, have you read X Men vs. Avengers? No. That's a story where Cyclops first gets the Phoenix power, and there's actually five. Um, they call them the Phoenix Five. I forget who all. Hope Summers is one of them, but they all have this Phoenix power, and then the X Men 
almost turn into villains. Like Cyclops is leading them, and, and they fight the Avengers. It's, it's right. a pretty cool run. It's very similar to like this level of event, like Secret Wars. But anyway, Cyclops merges with the Phoenix Force. And and what good did that do him? I Nothing. Mean, that dude's a douche <laughs> in, in any form, and he did zero with it. Yep. Um, but really, a lot of this first issue is about these guys surviving in these rafts, right? right. Reed Richards, of course, has the tech to try to survive the incursion. Mm -hmm. And we see a, a cool, I really like that that um, panel where they're in the raft and they're in between the two universes mm -hmm. and there's like lightning and shit going yeah. in between them. But this is where part of the raft gets destroyed. Sue Storm and a few others are kind of drifting off. And... I, I like how confident Reed was in his wife. He's like, oh, she'll be fine. Like, basically. Right. She, and then quickly realize that's not going to happen. <laughs> right, right. I mean, they've gone, dude, they've gone through so much stuff. Yeah. You know, back and forth through time, uh, across dimensions, fought, I mean, gods and, and you know, all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. they, they've been put through some stuff. So he has high confidence yeah. in her because she's proven herself. You right, know? right. And, I mean, that we see so many characters in this just opening scene i mean beast right. is there spider woman black widow um black panther's there we see the whole fantastic four everyone's just I, fighting I was, everyone. I, captain falcon was in there. he captain was falcon like, was in there yeah, i was like wow yep. even back then they even they, back they then brought dude. this crap up i i like the 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 part almost said scene like it was a movie i wish um where kingpin's having like this viewing party <laughs> and then Punisher shows up, like, based. I can't take all these bullets with me. They right. don't show what happens, but you know he slaughters everybody right, in that right. motherfucker. Right. <laughs> that was cool. This is like a little rated R comic where they show just that scene. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I, I, I really like this first issue. Yep. And the ending, you know, I did you read this in one sitting or did um, no. You read, no, okay. Um, I, I didn't read it in one sitting, but after the first one, I jumped right to the second one. Mm. But that was a cool ending. And then, you know, you get Dr. Doom's mask with the whole white, the void. We have no idea right. what the hell's happening next. Right. He's like, how would you feel about this first issue? I, I, I was kind of confused in the beginning. I'm like, well, I mean, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, but there was, like, some things in it that was pretty cool. Um, when um, Colossus threw the Hulk up yes. through the ship, that yes. was pretty cool. Yep. Uh, She-Hulk was like, are you sure you can do that? Cycle. I was like, I've had plenty of practice. Exactly. Like, just bro, that. That, was, that was pretty bitch, cool. Yeah. But it was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you can't have anxiety about it because you know it's going to get explained at some point. Right. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's true. That that first issue doesn't make a lot of sense at first. Yep. But then once you read through the whole thing, you're like, oh, shit, now I get all this. Yeah. Um, and this is one that I, I've gone back and after I read it the first time, skimmed through and kind of re and you pick up a lot more every time. Right. Like, there's a lot to this event. Yep. Um, issue two starts off, like, strange. You get this new Thor joining this, like, group of Thors. Like, there's fucking Thors everywhere. I was getting, like, I was hoping there. Good thing there was no splits in there, though. That was a good thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what did you think at first? Like, this first issue, or the, the beginning of the second issue, I'm like, I don't even know that I want to read the story. <laughs> Right, I'm looking at it, I'm like, who's this puny guy picking up the I had to I, I thought I missed something. I'm like, cause they didn't say any names. Right. And they had two two kids there yep. trying to pick up, you know, Milnir. And I'm like, um, you know, what's going on here? And then after Thor, because they are the Thors. Right. Right. right? After um Thor picks up Milnir, it's like Beta Ray Bill grabs him and Beta Ray Bill is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, his freaking arm is like as big as this kid's whole body and stuff. He just picks him up <laughs> by the neck. Right. So I thought that was pretty cool. So it was just, I, it was it was a little confusing in the yeah. beginning, but, you know, the whole League of Thors kind of thing, that right. was pretty cool. But then, but then what they end up being associated with was even more confusing, but. Yeah, yeah they end up, they're basically a police force. Exactly. For Doom. Exactly. Like, they're the bad guys, pretty much. Yep. Like, he's the one that call, that he calls to keep everything in order. Mm, right. So we, we uncover a lot in this second issue about what where we are now. We're in this battle world, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we, we they, they um, the Thors travel to Bar Sinister. To um, basically bring Mr. Sinister in, mm -hmm. he's done some. He's he's ran his mouth a little too much, um, of course. Dude, there's a cool little fight with him, and I don't even know who the hell Braddock is. Brian, you know this character? Yeah, that's Captain Britain. Really? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, the uh, the Britain Corps. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, okay. The, yeah, the, um, it's not the Britain Corps. It's the um, yeah, I think it's the Britain Corps. Yeah, you um, be because right. they because they are like a multidimensional police force, kind of like the Green Lanterns. Got it, got it. So yeah, he was basically running his mouth about one of them, mm -hmm. and then he fights him. Um, Sinister's head gets cut off. No, he fights his <laughs> the brother. The brother. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The yeah the 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 other the the bigger brother wanted to fight Sinister, and he's like, no, no, I'm fighting right. that one. Right. Um, dude, real like quickly, Sinister's head gets cut off. Mm -hmm. 
but it's just like no problem at all. Yeah, it's like ah, uh, you know, I'm used to this. <laughs> yep. So he defeats this guy, and they, I mean, their fight is pretty cool. Little um, you know, panels. This fight here, right? But basically, this leads to Doom kind of getting pissed off, right? Like enough with the bullshit. And he's sitting at that tree that whatever it's called, the um, Don't throne tree, tree of life yeah, like or the fucking whatever. the thing that's in uh, Loki. Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty cool to see that. But um, dude, what what did you think like? Of this whole concept, when because this is kind of where it really starts to unravel that it's Battle World, it's a little piece of different, you know, parts of the remnants of these other universes, and Doom is now basically God. Right. Well, it was a little confusing, but again, it gets explained later yeah. because apparently, because Stephen Strange is like the the sheriff. Yeah. Right, and he's like the right hand of Doom. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is weird to I'm see. I'm like Doom, uh, Doom's guard. And mm -hmm. Castle Doom and everything's Doom and you know Doom is God and yep. blah blah blah. But you know what they explain later is that a period of time has gone by. Right. I think eight years. It's like something. eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why he's all this stuff has been established. Yep. So it was it was weird. Yeah. But you know it was a little confusing. But you know it was pretty cool in the end. Yep. And then we see um you know Sue Storm at the side of Doom. Right. And her kids. Yeah. Valeria is like kind of like. She's not a sheriff, but she's also kind of part of this whole hierarchy. Like, yeah. she's, you know, talking to Strange. And mm -hmm. um, at the end of this issue, we see the Cabal, which is Thanos and that right. whole crew. Do they come out? They, they're open from this pot, and they wreck shit. Dude, they, they <laughs> massacred that poor dude. Yeah, man. they did. I mean, they just did him all kinds of wrong. The dude with the spear through him and shit. Yeah. So that, that issue kind of ended axe. there. Um, and then that's when the next issue, Strange informs Doom of like you know everything that's going on. This, um, these, uh, what the hell you call it? The Cabal and these guys, right? And um, you know Doom, Doom's not happy. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm not gonna go through every single sure. um, thing that happens, but getting to the point where the two um, reads interact, mm -hmm. that was cool. You know, because you got completely different reads. You got the the one we're used to, right? Mm -hmm. The Mr. Fantastic or whatever. Um, right. And then you have this maker who's like the evolved version. Mm -hmm. And they're working together for a little bit. Until they don't. Until they don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you backstab. Right? Yeah, how'd wow. you feel about that? Because you're a big Reed Richards guy. I, I was like, that's dirty. Yeah. That's dirty. But, you know, but that's typical of this series where everybody – Everybody of power is after their own power. They don't, they have mm -hmm. their own agenda. You know, it's like in Captain America when um, they, you know, Captain America jumps off the plane, don't need yep. a parachute, and they go, come up on this ship, and they go there to save these hostages, but Black Widow has a, her own orders, mm -hmm. you know, to go get this data or whatever. So just like in the first Secret Wars, Doom, he has his own agenda. Right. And so right. He, he'll interact whenever he needs to interact, but he's on his own thing. Same thing with the maker, you mm -hmm. know. And, um, you know, I, I like that scene, too, where um, I keep saying scene like it's a movie. I mean, it pretty much sure. is when in my mind sure. it is, you know, but scene, when panel. Yeah. Same difference. But when uh, when Doom confronts um, the survivors, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he's like strange knows that they're not going to bow. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, he's right. going to kill these motherfuckers. Right. So he sends them off like scattered throughout Battle World. Hold on, we're missing something important right right, right before that. What? What did Doom do to Cyclops? Who come out oh, all right. boastful? That's I got right. the Phoenix power. Crack. Just cracks his neck like nothing. Punk. Dude, because this is God Emperor Doom. Exactly. Like this, is, I mean, he's he is God of Battle World. Yep. Which was cool to see because we, you have talked about some of these top tier. You know, not not a, they're not mutants, but these almost mm -hmm. Omega level characters like Franklin Richards is one you right. talked about. Who's in this? Right. Um. And you've talked about Doom. We've not talked about God Emperor Doom, right. which would be a cool hidden gem. Mm -hmm. But this was just cool to see that um, that Doom in the comics and that powerful. And, yeah, I mean, we're talking about the Phoenix Force and freaking Doom just in a split second, like nothing. Right, right. <laughs> Those are not like the right. trash. I mean, if we if we do something on that, it it'll have to be a series because then you yeah. have to have um, Drew, uh, Thor, um, you know, um, God Doom. I mean, mm. there's like different levels of, you know, these heroes. There's a different level of the Phoenix. I mean, so it, it would have to be something completely different. Yeah, absolutely. And then after that, um, 
Strange teleports all the survivor right. members, and then now he gets killed. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and, and it's just like a blast of energy. He's gone. Yep, which is crazy because this is like his guy's right hand man. Right, but he did one, and this is that like God complex, right? Like, yep. I mean, this is doom being doom. Mm-hmm. Like, you do one thing, you you don't follow my orders, now you're gone. Even though you he basically built this world with him. Right, right. Um, which is kind of shitty because, well, that wasn't the shitty part. The shitty part was that he let everybody think that somebody else did it. Yes. I mean, if, if you're that God, you can just say, I did it because I wanted right. to. You know, you know right. w- w- what, what you going to do? Which Thanos kind of called them out about because uh, someone was asking if he's God, and then he kind of was like pussyfooting around. No, no, no. He said, he said, so Thanos said, if you're God, you would admit that I'm God. And and Doom like, I am God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Th- Thanos cool. challenged him a little bit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> to, to his own demise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was funny. Yep. Uh, I mean, it just goes to show you the power. Like, this is right. a character. Like, I hope we see this character in the MCU. Mm-hmm. This is, If they were to take a lot of elements from this mm-hmm. and incorporate them into the Avengers Secret War, I do think they could top Endgame. Right. If done, pro- to your point, your kind of disclaimer, mm-hmm. if done properly, there's enough substance here to take the movies to the next level with this right. one. But my thing is this. How is it, oh, what? While I'm thinking about it. So back to um, Storm. Mm-hmm. So Storm's only real weakness, right, was her claustrophobia. Right. Professor X is a what? He makes people forget shit, right? Exactly. Why can't he just take it away from her? You know? Why he's got to leave her with that limp? Anyway. <laughs> um, so now I forgot what I was going to say about this other thing. Um, I'll get back to it. We'll get back to it, you know. Um, and the, and the, we... we we start to learn kind of how this whole thing is created a- after um, Strange is killed. Right. Doom kind of relocates underground or whatever, mm-hmm. and we see the Molecule Man for the first time. Right. Which this is where we start to learn, you know, basically that the Beyonders were the original, the originators of reality, all this shit. Right. Um, but the, the real big twist here was when we learned that Molecule Man is basically the center of all of this from right. a power standpoint. Right. He's the battery yeah. to, to Doom's front end power. Right. Right. Which then kind of explains the beginning of the comic where we see Doom, we see Molecule Man and um, Strange kind of at the edge of reality with mm-hmm. that white light. That's where Doom became God. Right. And we, in Strange even said in the comic, like he had the kind of option too. Right. But he didn't want to. Right. And Doom was all about it. But my thing is, why not? Because, uh, so when I read this in, in initially, there was one Beyonder, only one. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, like, there's, there's multiple, in the DC world, there's multiple Mixaplexes, right? Mm-hmm. But Mixaplex is the only one that comes out of his race to, like, want to pop around and create mischief. The Beyonder was the only one of his race that, that we, were, we were aware of. Yeah. Now, in this version, there are the Beyonders. And they were so bored with all the things that they could do, they, they decide, oh, let's dabble in death, mm-hmm. which is how all this stuff starts happening, right? So in Doom, they're on the edge of just watching them. They couldn't kill them, he said. Right. So they decided to steal their power, right, mm-hmm. which is where Molecule Man comes in. Yeah. Um, and there's also a little subplot here with um, Valeria, who's trying to find out who really killed Strange because she don't believe Doom. Right. And then Peter basically explains it to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and... and Another part that that we kind of missed was when Strange gives um, what's it the Eye of Agamotto mm-hmm. and then the Gauntlet to um, is it Namor and T'Challa? Mm-hmm. We see them working together, right. which is cool because they're at odds a lot of times in right. the comics. Well, Namor is at odds at times <laughs> with, with everyone. Anybody, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I think he even asked um, Namor kind of asked T'Challa about that, like, oh, we're together, we're working together now. And he's like, dude, I don't have any kingdom to be a king of anymore. Like, right. all that shit's done now. We're, you know, it's kind of moved on to this cause, mm-hmm. which was pretty cool. Um, and they kind of formulate a plan. Like, they, they learn that, um, you know, Molecule Man's the source of the power. They're formulating some kind of plan to, to basically defeat Doom. And T'Challa and Namor are there more of a, as a distraction. Right. To try to distract Doom and this, you know, Correct. try to fight him. Um and, and when, um, you know, it's, uh, to allow Reed Richards to go to Molecule Man. Mm-hmm. And I, I, and I know I'm jumping around like crazy, but I really like the ending and the fact that it goes back to Molecule Man and he kind of determines that, oh, right. you shouldn't have this power, Doom. Right. And, um, and he, he brings up the point 
Reed Richards of Doom being jealous of him. Like, dude, after everything, right. you became a god, and then you still stole my life. Right. You were a god, but you wanted my life. Right. That's right. crazy. Right. To the point you took my kids. Yeah. You took my wife. Um, you erased all memory of them from me, from, mm-hmm. of uh, uh, of me to them. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, he was like, to this day, and Doom was like, oh, you think you're better than me? He's like, I am. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. That was cool. But we missed something that was Funny, but also <laughs> kind of critical. Uh, who was that? Uh, Thanos. Yeah. Got up there talking all bad. And <laughs> Doom just punched him in the chest and ripped his whole skeleton out. Oh, my God. Out, yeah, man. like nothing. <laughs> yeah. I know what I was going to say. Mm. So imagine this, right? You got $500 million budget for a movie. Yeah. Right? And you can't get these characters right for nothing. <laughs> in a one steel pen and ink panel right they was able to portray such awesomeness mm-hmm. as doom like punching this guy in the chest and ripping his spine out right i mean come on come on you can do that with pen and ink but you can't do that in a 500 million dollar live action movie come on maybe they need more budget <laughs> <laughs> or more creative directors there not the go. writers right i think the writers can do it yes um i think the animation can do it the, the movie crew can do it. Mm. The directors, I they trying to make their own right. you know, Willy Wonka, and they just messing it up. May, maybe they should do what we suggested a few months back, mm. bring the Russo brothers back. Or that. I mean, they, they pulled it off with Infinity War and Endgame. Right. I, I, and the reason why I believe they could do it is we've watched them kind of scale in movies. They started with um, Captain America Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Great movie kind of grounded, right? Mm -hmm. Then they did Civil War, boom, the next level. Then they did Infinity War and Endgame, which, you know, two of the greatest event movies Mm. in history, you know, for comics. So I think that they could handle it. I think so as well, but I think that these guys get bored with making these movies. They obviously know how. It's like um, Prince, right? Mm. When he was making music, he came out with Purple Rain. After that, how, how big of a thing it was, you would think that his music kind of like went south. Mm-hmm. But he's like, I can make these kind of albums all the time. Right. You know, I don't, you know, it's easy to make hit uh, records. I just want to make the stuff I want to make. Correct. And I think that's where the Russo brothers are. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're being their own thing. They want to make, they want to do things that they think is creative. Right. Well, you know what? You guys had enough time off. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. They need you. Uh, um, yeah. So does, um, um, what is it? Ah, uh, I can't think. Do with the cape. Um, okay. um, strange. No, the the guy he he died. He got burnt all up. Uh, spawn. 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 Oh yes, do, yes. Do spawn for real. Oh, that would be cool. Russo brothers oh, doing yeah. spawn. Yep. Yeah, I would definitely be down to see that. Um, you, you talk about Reed Richards and you know being split from his family. There's a a a, a scene where he sees Sue Storm and she don't recognize him. Right. And it reminds me of Guardians of the Galaxy 3 mm. where you got Peter Quill in a very similar situation with Gamora. Right. The only difference is Reed Richards ain't crying like a little bitch. <laughs> He's there to get his job done. You got right. Peter Quill crying every two freaking mm. seconds. You mean you don't remember me? Right. You know, right, right. I'm just, uh, Reed Richards. Well, Reed, Reed did have a moment, you know, he when, he, when, he, when they disappeared and he thought he lost them. Correct. So he was, he was, I, I'm, I'm thinking, oh my God, this dude is going to be crippled through this whole event. <laughs> he ain't Peter But Quill, eventually though. he came and, you know, he did what he needed to do. Yes. Um, but I, I, you know, it was really cool to see Reed get the power, yeah. you know, at the end, which basically then pretty much knocked off Doom, mm-hmm. right? And then, um, you know, they, they start to put this kind of thing back together, which, and this is why I say it could be a perfect reboot for the MCU. Right. Because you could do something very similar where, mm-hmm. Doom gets the path. He's going to be the big bad. Get, give Doom the power, right? And whoever gets the power at the end, if it is Reed Richards, your you know Pedro Pascal's version, um, <laughs> then we could reset the entire MCU because it's like all the universes were destroyed. Now they're in Battle World, mm-hmm. and now whoever gets the God power at the end rest- doesn't necessarily restore everything. They create a new, mm-hmm. you know, universe. Right. So that could definitely happen with sure. secret wars where we destroy and i mean i this may be a bold prediction you know i like to make predictions here adrian sure i think that the whole universe colliding story is what they're going to do in secret wars 
and it may be the Fox universe colliding with the MCU. <laughs> I okay. I mean, let's go with that. We're gonna be, and the reason I say that is if if all these rumors are true, yeah. Deadpool three, Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, there's rumors about that being kind of the beginning of the Secret War story, which we're gonna see a lot of the Fox universe in there. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's where the incursion starts. Never know, mm -hmm. and leads towards Secret War, where we got you know. Hugh Jackman and his squad up against Robert Downey Jr. and that squad. You know, you never know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I still, I still think that um, Deadpool should go and like trick Loki off of that that, um, that throne. <laughs> throne. Yep. just hang out there for a little just bit. Hang out there, <laughs> play play with the timelines for a little bit. Yes. Um, so, how, how did you feel about the end of this? I thought because Doom doesn't get a lot of. I mean, he gets a lot of the stuff that he that he seeks to get mm -hmm. but he doesn't get a lot of stuff that really matters to him and it was cool to see at the end that he actually got what ultimately um he want yeah which stem which is the driving force for a lot of this stuff his face back uh because there was a, a point um in one of the books where sue told him to take his mask off and you know he's all disfigured and mm -hmm. all this stuff. so he's right. all, which is the whole reason why he built that armor yeah you know he built the mask to cover the face but then he because he's highly intelligent you know, but he's also um, he's also highly magical, mm -hmm. right? Um, so he 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 melded he melded uh, technology and sorcery together. So that's why he's able to do all of these different things, right? But um, so but his his psychic his psychic just like Storm, he's broken. Yeah, and he's broken off of you know his appearance, right? Yeah, that's an interesting ending because that's something that has always bothered him, mm -hmm. and now so I essentially as much as Reed. You know, was as much as Doom hates Reed and wants his life, and they're always at odds. Mm -hmm. In the end, when Reed got the power and restored everything, I would assume that he's the one that you know fixed Doom's face, right. Right. which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. But throughout this, at the end, it's like who had the, who who really had the power? Mm. Molecule Man. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And it's funny because the the Doom's jealousy is what caused Molecule Man to give the powers back to Reed or not mm -hmm. give the powers to Reed fully. Right. Like he got to see that this dude is really flawed mm -hmm. and really, I mean, created this whole world out of an insecurity, out of a jealousy, out of anger Yep. <laughs> and pose as a, a fake God pretty much. Yep. But I thought it was a great story, dude. Oh, absolutely. Great I, story. I, I definitely, it was more, it was definitely a different spin than, than the original. Mm -hmm. even though I like both. Yeah. Oh, we missed something. What? Ben Grimm when he came out. Oh yeah, and, um, Galactus, right? They, yep. they they both fought, but uh, Ben came out as like as big as Galactus, probably yes, some or fifty some feet. So that was an interesting part. Dude, that's right. Yeah, he, he was basically used as like a um, almost like a shield, like right. um, you know, he was part of the world. Yep. Also, another thing we miss: your boy, Human Torch, Johnny Storm, was the son. Yes. Yes. Because Sue was Sue was like, um, you know, why you know I miss him, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. but Doom was like, I could have just killed him. Right, but instead, I made him <laughs> made his him son. The son. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, got to be useful somewhere. Right. I mean, I, I thought of you because you always see how useless he is. But I'm like, dude, my man turned into the sun, dude. I mean, right. they, oh, they, okay. Okay. they need light, right? Right. <laughs> but yeah, I I really enjoyed this. I thought it was cool. I I can't wait. It, after reading this, I'm more excited about Secret Wars, the um, Avengers movie. Sure. Just hopefully it's done right. You know. Right. Um, hopefully they bring the Russo brothers in. On yeah. And make them. So do it. we know you guys are watching or, you know, you have someone watching. Right. We, we okay it. Okay. You're getting our blessing. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, it's like, it's like we're the mob. We're gonna give you our blessing our okay. Right. To bring the Russo brothers back. And for that advice, advice, <laughs> if you take it, um, convince Dunkin' Donuts to you know, give us some Joe <laughs> for real. <laughs> so, um, all right. Secret Wars 15. If you had to uh, give this a, a rating, Adrian, on a scale from one to 10, the entire event, yep. what would you give it? I would go with a eight point five. Okay. I I would go I was gonna go I go nine. Yeah. I go nine. Yeah, yeah, it's up there. Yeah. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. I do like it. Now I, I do like the original. Mm -hmm. The original was really good. Mm -hmm. Especially it's one of those things where you gotta put it in perspective too, given the time that it was really it was like an eighties comic. Mm -hmm. and I think it was their first really major event which they pulled it off well, which was kind of the birth of these Marvel events. Right. 
which led to, you know, Secret Wars. There's also um, Secret Invasion, not the show. There's mm-hmm. a, a comic event, Secret Invasion, that's way better than the show. There's Devil's Reign that came out of here. So many of these big events, Civil War, but it all started with the original Secret Wars. Right. So I, I um, and I enjoyed how it was similar in some aspects, but it wasn't like a rehash or a reboot. Mm-hmm. You know, it just kind of, it, it hit kind of the same beats for me. Yep. Um, the original one had Magneto featured heavy. Magneto really wasn't in this one. Right. Um, Doom was Galactus. Big, Galactus. Was heavy. Yeah, he was heavy in the first one. Not much in this one. Wolverine wasn't in the second one. Nope. We didn't see him at all. Um, we did see Spider Man. Miles wasn't even created back in the original. Right. But um, but yeah, all in all, enjoy them both. I I like this one better. Well, there you have it. Our Secret Wars 2015 review. Moving on, we got X Men '97. The moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> um, first two episodes, dude, I started watching the first one and I'm like, they're fucking listening to us. Right. Your boy, Roberto da Costa, mm-hmm. Sunspot. Yeah, which was a hidden gem. Which was a hidden gem a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Dude, I, and I didn't, at first, um, cause you know, we've, we've done so many shows, so many hidden gems. I, I'm watching the episode and I'm like hearing this kid's background. And he's like, I have a, like when, when he's telling the, um, the, uh, the hell these guys called the um, mercenaries that's Mer- called. yeah the uh, friends of humanity mm-hmm. this little squad he was trying to bribe them with money and he'd right. say like i'm royalty i'm like dude this sounds like a hidden gem that adrian did because they didn't i don't think he gave his name right away right and i didn't pick up off of the look did you know it it was um what's his name sunspot right off the bat as soon as he brought up the money part okay so but before when you just saw him you didn't know at first but when he mentioned the money um, I no, I, I knew I knew who he was. Well, I didn't know who he was until yeah, until yeah. that point, uh, because he could have been anybody, right? Some regular kid, but yeah, yeah. So when he started saying that, I was like, wait a minute, that's the fucking dude Adrian was talking about recently. Yep. And then he mentioned Brazil, mm-hmm. right? And then of course later on we see a little bit of his powers, right? But that was cool that he was featured here because mm-hmm. you know obviously they're listening and watching right, us, right. you know. It's also cool that they they only showed on like a little bit of his power yes. which i'm assuming means that he'll be part of um x-men 97 moving forward to right. some degree uh, yeah i would think so he also is kind of like ashamed of it like he's trying to keep it under cover like he doesn't really you even when they're fighting he's like not using his powers exactly exactly matter of fact they, there was part of the the dialogue you mm-hmm. know jubilee was like dude why didn't you just use your powers on right he's, you know whatever yeah but but to your point, I mean, he's ashamed of it. To you know, he doesn't even want to tell his parents. Exactly. You know? um, and in this this first episode, it kind of resembles the first episode of the animated series a little bit. When Jubilee, basically, Sunspot is kind of in Jubilee's spot. Mm-hmm. Jubilee in the in the first episode is not an X Men yet. She's being attacked by Sentinels, and then the X Men save her. This one's a little different. The Friends of Humanity, which were featured heavy in the animated series, are attacking sunspot with sentinel tech mm-hmm. i like that too like it kind of reminds me a little bit of the mcu where you know after the first avengers we see this a lot in spider-man homecoming where damage control is using like the tech that was left over from the um aliens or whatever right. and turning it into weapons we see something similar here with sentinel tech because sentinels are big in the animated series we think they're all right. destroyed now and these guys are using some of their tech for these little like guns or whatnot right um, so we, we, we see the X-Men show up pretty cool scene in the warehouse where they're fighting. Um, the, the action scenes in X-Men 97, I think are phenomenal. Oh yeah. I read that. Um, and I'm sure you could speak to this. I read that, uh, the creator said it was heavily inspired from anime, mm-hmm. the way they do the fighting and the, like you're a big anime guy. Did you right. get that vibe at all? No, no, not at all. I, really? I, I wouldn't consider that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even consider that mildly, uh, influenced by anime really i did like the artwork which yeah. is i'm surprised yeah by um and i think they changed wolverine's voice because it didn't even it didn't even <laughs> register um in my mind when i was watching it yep now same dude bro cal cal really? the, yeah yeah I, I don't know what they did on that com- on the preview then because that was just oh awful. you're saying they yes it was they picked probably the worst line he said in the entire show yeah. and put it out on that teaser uh, um but yeah i i the voice is I, I understand it's been 30 years so you're not gonna yeah. sound the same but i thought it was it was pretty good throughout yeah it was pretty cool it's just that um i was expecting that um um that commercial voice that yes. i heard and <laughs> I, I just didn't hear it 
Um, right. Or it was consistent enough to it, – it just didn't register. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like how this picks up right where the show left off. Like, Prof- Professor Xavier has been killed, but he also – so he was killed by Gyrick, but um, what's her name? Lalandra took him off planet, mm-hmm. basically said that he could survive off planet. Right. But – um, and they asked him in the in that last episode if he would ever come back, and he basically said like not in his you know physical form, pretty much. Right. So Xavier's pretty much out. I do think he'll show up at some point. I mean, it's X Men; they always find a way to bring him back, right? Of course. Like he has a, a a clone, a twin out there who has no life. So I mean, that that's one way we've seen him brought back before. Sure. His, um, his, his, you know, whatever consciousness was transferred and the guy just happened to look just like him because it was just convenient. There, there's that. Yeah, so we probably will see him sure. again. I'm sure you will. But um, it, it kind of picks off right where that happened. Um, we see this dude, Gyrix, in, in jail because he, he killed him. And, and Cyclops is there negotiating, like, you know, time off, um, time off his sentence so they can find um, Trask because right. they, they believe they're still um, – creating sentinels or whatnot and they do they, they find trash they find this whole sentinel um master mold and that whole deal um but this is a scene that we were talking about earlier with storm you know the x-men everyone but storm gets there they're fighting the sentinels this was the little preview we saw last week right right so we see that whole scene fleshed out and that scene um where we talked about earlier where the sentinels detect storm coming in mm-hmm. dude that is so cool like yeah. the sky start to dark like they did a really good job of displaying her powers right. in this scene here yep. and dude she comes in full force i mean it's like a hurricane tornado lightning storm <laughs> rain everything right and just and just immediately scoop up all the sentinels and yes. just gone right? like nothing dude and then um i i thought it was funny how wolverine lobotomized master mode like dude isn't his head like as big as this building <laughs> right right it's like how some like 12 inch claws or whatever yep. go through a you know eight foot neck right in in one slice oh uh, you know you know how they did it because gambit energized his claws yes so there you go yeah yeah that was um that was a little weird but cool <laughs> right right it's like it's like a it's like a rabbit riding on the back of a toad <laughs> right it's like I, how, how does how does they how's wolverine running full speed with gambit on his back <laughs> i mean wolverine's Whatever. pretty strong uh, okay all right but um that that was uh so in some comics some of the newer ones wolverine's um, mutation has kind of like evolved to where he can heat up his own claws. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like that was a little bit of a um, kind of a ode to that. Like obviously he can't do that in this show yet, right. but there are comics where he does that, and instead Gambit kind of you know charges his claws up. That's a stretch. I'm thinking that's a stretch. Wolverine heating up his dude. Look claws. it up. Yeah, you're the yeah you're the wow. hidden gem guy, bro. I, I I've seen it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not I'm not saying. I'm just, I just think oh, it's, it's corny. crazy that, yeah. It's, it's just corny. I mean, how, how is he going to do that? There's nothing, uh, anyway, no, another time. <laughs> yeah, who knows? We'll have to dig into that. But we see that, you know, here with um, Gambit, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and, dude, Jean Grey's pregnant. Right. That came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, it, it's part of, I, I think it's one of the things that make it um, polarizing, especially how it ended, mm-hmm. but it's also makes it more adult because Correct. there's some adult things happening in there. You know, yep. um, Rogue hooking up with Magneto yep. or had a past with Magneto right. and they're now rekindling, you know, things like that. Yeah, th- this, did you get the vibe that this is a little more adult than oh, absolutely. The, uh, than the animated series? Yeah. Like, it still feels like the animated series, but they feel, the, the content feels more mature in tone. Right. You know? Um. The other element that was kind of subtle, um, the chick from the government. Yeah. You know, uh, another woman in, in a position of power, which mm-hmm. is cool. Like uh, the British chick. Yeah, yeah, Sonia. Sonia. Yeah. And then you got the, the other Waller, one, the Waller over Earth, here. Yeah. So you got this person here. So to me, to me, that makes it a Spider-Man, that makes it a Daredevil. It's make, it makes mm-hmm. it grounded. Yeah. Because you got all these super people around, right? But you also have this very human human mm-hmm. in a position of power that's not only helping them out because you know how can cyclops walk in a jail and offer you know guy Rick 10 years off his sentence <laughs> right without somebody some kind of influence behind him yeah you know, everybody's trying to kill or neuter mutants and he just walks into it you know his whole team walks into a prison and can and can offer you know um guy Rick, you know this deal mm-hmm. you know without even consulting anybody else so i think her role in this um, forefront and in the background 
kind of grounded it, yeah. which is what doesn't happen in D.C. Correct. You know? Yeah, this was the character, Valerie Cooper, um, mm-hmm. and she is from the comics, and she plays kind of the same character in the comics, a national security advisor, okay. pretty much, which is uh, essentially what she is in this. Um, and, you know, she deals a lot with the the mutant affairs. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, li- I like her inclusion. I do like um, having a mix because it, it does get, let's say, boring, but I, I, I don't like when it's only supers. Right. It is nice to have a balance. And also, to your point, having some human characters that aren't just like s- little weakly, you know, they're not just right. like the hostages or like, just <laughs> right. you know, civilians Cannon that, fodder. right. That bat, you know, Zack Snyder's Batman's killing and stuff like right. that, you know? Um, so it is cool to see. And I, I think she'll, I think she's going to play a big role, yeah. you know, in this moving forward. But the first episode, um, ends on a bit of a cliffhanger, mm-hmm. right? We, uh, you know, X-Men are back at the mansion and they kind of, um, they get a notification that someone's in Xavier's room or office or whatnot. Mm-hmm. They show up and who is it? Magneto. It's our, it's Magneto. It's our Omega series mutant from last week, right? right? He's there and then he, he drops a, a mic drop on the X-Men, basically <laughs> like, yo, Xavier left this shit to me, bro. Kick right. rocks kind of shit, like, you right. know, which was, uh, I mean, it's definitely, definitely Magneto. <laughs> it is, Scott. Pulls his little <laughs> little bitch move. Yeah. Oh my God! You know they need me here. Right. You know Gene's trying to like, dude, you you're, you're going to be a father. Yeah. We need to move. We need to move on. Right. He's like, but they need us. No, they don't need you. No, they don't. You need them. Exactly. You know. And then Magneto comes in and he's like, Oh my God! I need to stay here now <laughs> to monitor you. Now, come on, dude. Right. Just go away. <laughs> For real. But yeah, that was uh, another little subplot was um, because Gene's pregnant. She's right. like, Do we? Let's. It's time to kind of go. Like, let's yeah. go raise this. Kid kid you know um so drop drops i dude i love the ending of that i thought that was cool mm-hmm. and again i i just i know they're listening adrian because exactly. if you remember months ago here one of my agree to disagrees i i posed the statement that magneto was a better leader yes of the x-men than xavier mm-hmm. you agreed right because yep. like me you're very smart you know you <laughs> obviously know that and now marvel agrees because look yep. what they're doing they're listening to us mm-hmm. and they're making it happen live yep. for us in the way that they wrote this story, the this, this second um, issue, I call it. Yeah. Um, Magneto, uh, Magneto has a he he got um, pardoned for all mm-hmm. of his stuff. Yep. Uh, because he saved them from their group. Right. And he took him. He took the guy that actually took Storm's power away. Mm-hmm. And the council up. And I thought he was just gonna <laughs> pulverize know, him, dude. But he's like, you know what? And he made the he made the gesture. He said, I could just crush you. Right. But I'm not going to because I promised uh, Xavier yep. that I would do this thing in his own, and so I'm gonna uh, you know honor him, and he got pardoned, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, but yeah, under Magneto, there's not gonna be a Cyclops team and a Storm no. team. I mean, they they're gonna lead some groups, they're gonna lead missions, mm-hmm. but there's not gonna be any any splitting of you know the 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 X Men right. under Magneto. Right. Yeah, because in the beginning of the um, the second episode, they basically – well, you see Magneto saving a bunch of people, and then this ends up – you know, it leads to them wanting to capture Magneto. They want to bring him in for trial because of his past crimes or whatever. Right. And then um, Executioner is in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever seen him in the comics at all? Mm. I, I've heard different names like Executioner, things like that. I, I yeah. don't remember him. I mean, I've mean, I, I definitely heard the name, and there's also a, there's a, a – story executioner's song i don't know if the character's in there much again um we have said this before agent we are not experts right so er- everything i'm saying could be a lie you never know you know but we're also going through a ton of content shit you ain't lying movies books mm-hmm. and i mean there's a lot of stuff that we're covering yep. so you know excuse us if we right. miss something that's one of our mutant abilities agent right. we're able to consume all these different you know platform all this content from different platforms at one time and show up once a week and deliver our knowledge to you right right. it's one of our mutant abilities so imagine how much more we could do Mm. if we had a box of joe (laughs) (laughs) yeah because this is caffeine deprived at that you know um but basically Uh, this dude executioner shows up and he's attacking the mutants uh, at this trial right right and in this, um, we see this, this what well, you talked about, Storm losing her power, is this weapon that I don't, we don't know who's created it yet. In the comics, Forge creates it. Mm-hmm. But it's a depowering um, gun, pretty much. has the same tech as the collar, which is like a radiation. Right. Um, but this shoots him with a, a concentrated blast. Mm-hmm. He's trying to shoot Magneto. 
Storm catches the, the bullet for him. Right. Now she's depowered, and Magneto's pissed, by the way. Mm-hmm. I also love the respect that Magneto has for Storm. Right. We see that a lot, like... He said, like, you're the closest thing to a goddess that we have. Like, Absolutely. he recognizes that, you know, you're powerful as shit, too. Right. Actually, there was, um, in doing the research on Storm, there was a little a little exchange between Storm mm. and um, Doom where they they looking at each other. They're like, yeah, we're rivals. I know we have our own agendas. Yeah. But in this moment right here, this is, there's some, you know, there's some attraction going on. Yeah. So... Yeah, well, I mean, we know we know Storm practices nudism, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Um, there is that. So, but and this leads to the scene that you were just talking about, where Magneto, I mean, he basically takes the damn courtroom up <laughs> into the upper right. atmosphere, and you know, basically like pumps his chest out to these guys, like kind of tells them, "Stop fucking with me." Right. Like I could, I he said was saying smite instead of kill. That must be like the new PC thing. Sure. But we knew what he meant. Right. But he did say like I I could smite you right now, and in the mm-hmm. past I would have smited you. Right. Um, but it was it was a cool flex yeah. to bring them up there. And and I think everybody on the ground was expecting Magneto to smite them. Oh yeah. You know. Yes, because he's still trying to prove himself to the X Men. Right. There's just so much depth to this show already. Yep. You know, you have so many elements. You got the um. Gene and Cyclops deal. Are they in? Are they out? They're having a baby, or they had the mm-hmm. baby. Um, which was, there was a funny scene where Wolverine's back at the mansion with Gene. Right. And, you know, she's going into labor, and she, she's like, he's coming. And he goes, he takes his clothes. Who, Apocalypse? Like, <laughs> <Right. laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Uh, they, they did have some cool humor that, you right. know, hey, it wasn't too much like a lot of these MCU movies at times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's cool that, uh, you know, badass Wolverine, yep. and then he freaks out over over a baby, you right, know? Right, right. I also love the line. Like, they, Wolverine's got some cool lines where he's in the um, hospital, mm-hmm. and the, and this guy says something about a C-section, and he pops his claws. He's like, I'll show you a C-section. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That was that was that was cool. But the the baby's born, so you got that whole plot. You got Storm now with her pow- no powers. Mm-hmm. Beast basically confirms that it's permanent. Right. So which I mean we know how, you know, comics works. I'm sure she'll be back at some point with the powers. Sure. But she's gonna, you know, go on a, her own separate journey now. Who knows? Dude, and this is like Black Panther, I think, was even in an episode or two of the animated series. So they there's so many there's so much potential with this show. Uh-huh. Um, and if they stay true to the old series where we will see some of these cameos, I'd love to see her interact with T'Challa in this. Right. That'd be cool. Yep. Now, that does happen in the comics after she loses her powers. Right. Um, so who knows? We may see that. There's also um, Magneto. We talked about the Morlocks earlier. Yeah. He makes them residents of Genosha, yep. and then Genosha is now recognized by the UN. Correct. Big deal. And he almost kind of he flexes to the X-Men. He's like, with all of Xavier's money, you guys never did this. He never did this, and you guys never thought of this. Like, what the hell's wrong with y'all? Yep. Um, but just I, so I, I really like Magneto's portrayal. The one thing I did not like was the stupid fucking costume he has. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of. Is that not his worst costume in the comics? Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, kind of creepy. Yes. Kind of uncle creepy. Yeah. You know. Um, but I, I get why. They don't want him wearing the helmet in that other getup because that was his whole villain, you know. So it, I get that. Like, and there's even a scene where you know he's holding the helmet and Rogue right. pops in and and has some. And you mentioned that there's a little, there's some, um, you know, adult behavior going on with yeah. these two. There's yeah. a scene too where um, Gambit Gambit's out there, you know. Right. Yeah, he's third party in, you know. So I kind of if. If they're in there just talking, why is Gambit out, first of all, out there just listening? Yeah. And why is he pissed off when he walked out? So I'm thinking they cut out some scenes in that. Oh, yeah. Where they got down. Yeah. And Gambit overheard it. Oh, they weren't just Which, talking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just by the way she left and why he's sitting out there right. like that. Oh, pissed. Cause, yes. Because he's, I mean, he's been infatuated with Rogue for right. the entire animated series, yep. you know. And they've kind of, they, they never really dated in the show, but they've, you know flirt here and there, but she's always been so hesitant because of the, her whole absorbing the powers. Which you saw Magneto take her glove off yes. and they touched. I'm assuming that he's able to put like a, a thin film or thin force field around his, yeah. his body to protect him from being absorbed, uh, his powers being absorbed mm-hmm. by Rogue, but that's still close enough for her to feel that intimacy. Correct. So he's basically the only one that was able to do that yeah. with her. 
Listen, Magneto, we, we, I mean, we talked about Riz here before. Magneto's got some Riz, bro. He's going to, if there's a way, he's going to figure it out. So, right. right. Um, but, and, and there has been some, you know, bonding with those two in the comics at times. So it was cool to kind of see that take, mm -hmm. um, you know, showcased here as well. And apparently some bonding with uh, Janet Van Dyne on, uh, in Secret oh, Wars. Oh, yeah, too. Secret Wars. So, yeah, he was, uh, so he's been around. Yeah, he had her the at the eyes. crib. <laughs> <laughs> it's that white hair, dude. You That's know? it. Hey, That's, I, hey. Mm. <laughs> He's just he just magnetizes them, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, a, a lot of different plots, or a lot of different, you know, or, or a lot of substance to the show already. Just two episodes yep. in, um, and then we get hit with the ultimate cliffhanger at the end. Uh, you know, Storm, she leaves once she realizes she doesn't have any powers. She's right. like, and, and she left a nice little letter that Jean reads to the X Men. Right. And it, you know it's just so well written, like the mm -hmm. show in general. But mm -hmm. she she makes a comment that you know now that she hasn't had her powers, it ain't been that long. But she's like, it feels so long, like the right. time that I was an X Men to now. Because, and, and they did a lot to um, build up this moment because in the first episode, Jean, we see that relationship between Jean and Storm. Uh -huh. Jean's having some um, reservations about having a mutant child. Right. She's like almost. Didn't want to say it, but Storm said it for right. her. Where I, you, you hope the child's a human, because right. um, it's not guaranteed your child's going to be a mutant if you're a mutant, mm -hmm. right? So she's hoping that you know it's not. Um, and she makes a statement about how her powers were such a big deal to her, and that's what led her to this X Men family, Storm. And then to see her lose them in the next episode, it, it really it, it drives that point home of how impactful that was. So right. Storm, storms off, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Um, she leaves, and then the doorbell rings, and everyone thinks it's Storm again. Mm -hmm. We see Jean Grey at the door. Mm -hmm. Now I'm confused because there's a Jean Grey in the X-Mansion with the new baby, who they named Nathan, which we'll get to. Right. And then this Jean Grey lookalike comes to the door and says she needs to see the X-Men. What were you thinking at this point? I immediately went to, um, in the comics, there was... Um, the Phoenix Force took over, basically incubated Jean Grey. She was in like a egg or cocoon, like at the bottom of a lake or something. Mm -hmm. And then she, she was like a clone, as opposed to taking over Jean Grey. So that's where my mind went. Got it. So in other words, it's two different entities um, um, going on. But yeah. But the confusing part was that the Jean Grey that shows up at the door, she was like in a panic. Correct. So I don't know what that was about. But as far as them two being to get being at the, in the same scene at the same time, I'm thinking clone. Mm -hmm. So in the comics, there is a Jean Grey clone, Madeline Pryor, who is also Cyclops' first wife. Okay. And is also the mother of Cable. What did they name the baby in X Men '97? Nathan. Nathan. What's Cable's name? Nathan Christopher Charles Summers. Okay. That's Cable. Cable is in the animated series. Right. He shows up in um, some of the time travel episodes. I forget the exact name, but he, he's, a, he's a pretty cool character in the animated series. So he does exist there already. So it would make sense. So I now they could go a different route because we've seen that in Marvel in the sure. past. But one of the things about the animated series is they tip when they adapt comic stories, they stay pretty true to them. Very different than the MCU. We see shit in the MCU. They change around all the time. Right. The animated series up until this point has always been pretty true to comics. Um, just tweaked to fit the small screen, you know. Sure. But uh, so we have one of these is a clone, obviously. Mm -hmm. It could be. I also I read what you were talking about where the Phoenix kind of becomes a physical form of Jean. Mm -hmm. Could be that. Could be Madeline Pryor. This could be um, Cable. Basically, there's a lot up in the air right now. Great cliffhanger for this episode. Sure. Like, I don't know about you, but when that ended, I was like, I was like, not upset because it was a great episode, but mm. like, damn it, I got to wait a fucking week to see this <laughs> next one. Right. Which normally I don't feel that way. Right. You know, you're watching Secret Invasion, you're like, damn it, there's four episodes left. I wish this exactly. shit would just end. <laughs> what four episodes? This episode end. Now. Yeah. <laughs> one and done. <laughs> but how'd you feel about this cliffhanger? Dude? I thought it was cool. Dude. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, um, well, first of all, the whole thing was, was, um, um, it was surprising for me mm -hmm. because I expected that because I saw it when you see the like previews and you compare it to the old um, X Men animated series. Yeah, I'm thinking the art because I'm a big artwork guy. Yeah, right. And so I thought that I was going to be disappointed with the artwork, which I was not. 
Mm. It's not animation. Uh, it's not Japanese animation style whatsoever. Right. But they did add some shading, which is cool, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and the story was good. The yeah. story was good, which is also important. Um, so between those two things, um, that and that cliffhanger, I'm intrigued, and I'm I'm definitely ready to see number three. Yeah, I'm here for it, dude. I I thought these episodes were great. I, if I were to rate the dude, I, I'd give this thing like a nine point eight so far, dude. I mean, it's yeah. up there. I don't I, I I'm hesitant to give perfect ten. I think the Magneto mm -hmm. stupid costume probably ruined it, and there right. there are, there is a little bit of cheesy dialogue, like some right. of the mostly Cyclops because he's just you know the capital cringe over there. <laughs> Right. Um, but mostly him, you know, the, the whole me to me, my X-Men thing was a little played out. Like they right. said that a hundred times and Magneto kept saying it too. Like yeah. that was a little stupid, yeah. but, um, all in all, I'd say 9.8. Yeah. First two episodes. I give it a high rating too. Um, uh, definitely nine, 9.5. Yeah. A uh, couple of little tidbit things um, I could have done without seeing, you know, Wolverine's chest hairs or <laughs> Gambit's half shirt, you know, but, you, you know, it was in the 90s. Correct. So, yeah. you know, you got to kind of go along with I'm that. I'm glad you brought that up. There, There is a pocket of fans, angry fans out there mm -hmm. that are so upset about, you know, Gambit's little crop top and, you know, why are they making Gambit this way? Like, dude, it was the 90s, bro. Right, right. That was the era of the big, uh, what they call them, the... When they did the, the workouts, oh, yeah. they had them tube socks on, <laughs> yep, or yep. whatever them things were. <laughs> Spandex uh, ankle, was everywhere. Ankle, ankle warmers, I, right. I think they call them, or something. Yep. Leg warmers or whatever. Oh, yeah, leg warmers. So, and then the bandana. Yep. Um, who was the guy? Uh, Richard Simmons. Yeah. The guy that never lost weight, but he was always doing exercises. <laughs> I mean, come on. Give him a break. That is true. He, he, he just put on spandex. Exactly. You know? Yeah, Spandex was bigger than the 90s. Dude. And actually, there are some... What's funny is there's scenes in the animated series where Gambit's dressed very similar. And there's, yeah. you know, the tight shorts and shit. It's just what was in that era. It's so just what it was. Hey, it is what it is. And Gambit's always kind of been a little, you know, playing on both sides. Right. Like, he'll right. he'll do some things that kind of mess with Wolverine and shit. Like, right. I, I... So, and also, who really gives a shit? Right. <laughs> like, who cares? It's fake people. Exactly. <laughs> well, they made this character... Who cares? Like, a lot of them are upset about the whole Morph thing. Well, he's not binary. Well, Morph changes between gender all the time. Like, right? <laughs> come on. Nobody said anything about Mystique. Exactly. Who changed to a dude and impregnated somebody. And had a child, somebody. right. right. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I don't think everyone has an agenda. I think it's this is a show we all can enjoy. And, you know, That's comics right. have oh, always... The thing is, I, I think you get a lot of fans that they do what people accuse us of doing. They've never read comics. Right. But they're fans of the comic shows and movies, which are great because, I mean, if they didn't, didn't have this big fan base, they wouldn't continue to make this shit, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that they they aren't fans of the comic. They've not really dug in because the comics are very diverse. Right. There's all kinds of characters in the yeah. comics. Male, female, gay, straight, in the middle, whatever, black, white, Asian, everything. Right. So if, when you see that in a movie, in the animated series, don't get nervous. It's okay. It's, right. it's just right. true to comic. Right. And also there's probably a, probably a couple, maybe a couple. Yeah. that have nothing else to do, and they want to make comics their heel to climb. Exactly. Um, so in that, um, find something. Get a job. It, yeah, for real. Go to work. Do something. So, all right, X-Men 97, first two. We'll review episode three next week when that drops. And, Adrian, we're going to wrap with a fan favorite here, okay? Some fans. We respond. This is where we look at your comments that you've left us over the past week. We may throw a little jab at you here and there, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe a little. Maybe. And sometimes we get some stuff that, you know, turns into um, a, a feature on this podcast. That's the right. Omega Level series, you yep. know, that was suggested by one of our fans. So mm. let's see what we have in store for us this week, Adrian. Mm. Uh, here you go. Funny Man Pete says, what mic are you using? Dude, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's not the mic. I think, you think they, they think that if they get the same mic as us, they're going to sound like us, Adrian? Um. Well, they could think that, <laughs> but that's, you know, not necessarily the thing. Nope, it's not going to happen. Um, ASP Awards says, sorry, I will shut up. Love this podcast even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know why you're shutting up, but that's a that's a great idea. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. We got <laughs> Hyena Screech something or another says, some of these opinions are whack, LOL. <laughs> uh, that's okay. You're whack. <laughs> mm. I am King eight eight one says I love this podcast. Two thumbs up. You agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I agree yeah, with that. I agree with that. I give I give that a thumbs up. You know, X Jamie Fru says 
who would you boys cast? And they call us boys because they, you know, that that makes me feel young. Uh, Does that make you feel young? No. <laughs> no? no? Not at all. <laughs> who would you boys cast as Mr. Sinister in the MCU? That's a good question, dude. Sure. Mr. Sinister. I mean, I, you're going to laugh when I say this because I was saying Magneto, but, dude, I, I would – Denzel Washington. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Who would be a good Mr. Sinister? All right. This may be out there. Have you seen – you've seen Django, right? Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Django, when yep. he plays the villain, yep. he is nasty. Yep. Imagine that Leo playing Mr. Sinister. Okay. I would go with that. I know it probably never happened. I don't think Leo's going to, you know, stoop down to the comic book level. Mm -hmm. But I'd say take an evil Leonardo DiCaprio and make him Mr. Sinister. There you go. Mm. What about you? I, I, I think anybody could play him. Yeah. Uh, because there's nobody that, that's taking that role. Mm. But I would just imagine imagine like a um, like a Garfield, the guy that played uh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody kind of tall, kind of thin. Mm. Uh, you you got to get the build right if you're going to build it off the com off the comic. Yeah, game. you can't just throw anybody in to play anybody. Uh, are now you saying Andrew Garfield? Um, he could probably pull it off. That's interesting. He, I think he could. There you go. All right, MW says on TikTok. <clears throat> this is in response to us saying the Phoenix would um solo the Justice League. The Phoenix Force would destroy the Justice League. They'd only have a chance if they had Professor Manhattan on their team. Well, first of all, it's not Professor Manhattan. Isn't it Dr. Manhattan? It's Dr. Manhattan. It's do Dude, I don't care if they have Dr. Manhattan. They could have Dr. Doolittle. They could have Dr. <laughs> Melfi. They could have Dr. Dre for all I care. Right. The Phoenix will solo the Justice League with all the doctors. Doesn't matter. And that's a, that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> um, Dr. Manhattan is like the molecule man okay he is a he's also like um um the richards kid oh franklin so franklin richards Got he it. is a reality warper mm. so he's he's up there um so first of all dr manhattan is, is not going to be on the justice league team so we don't have to worry about that <laughs> okay so the phoenix force will still destroy um right. um the Justice League, mm. Doctor Manhattan. That's a whole different level of character. Got it. Yeah, he's not even Justice League. So what's this guy talking exactly. about? You know, come on. And he doesn't even know the name, Professor Manhattan. Right. Come on. David Donahue says, "Just a question. I love all of your takes and agree with them. But why do you hate the Justice League so much? <laughs> we don't hate the. Ju do you hate the Justice League? I don't hate the Justice League. It's just that this this has become like a a, a comic thing, mm. comedy thing. <laughs> right. Because only comics. Because. <laughs> DC isn't putting out any content at this mm -hmm. point. Um, and the content they're putting out is kind of, you know, ridiculous, um, nonsensical. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we're just kind of making fun of them. Yeah. But um, we, we don't hate DC. No. Um, at all. Um, even though Superman is still bored. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so at the gym, like, you're never going to believe this. The locker I always use, I use the same locker, okay? Okay. And a couple weeks ago, I show up, I open the locker, and there's a little Superman sticker Aww. in the locker. Someone is targeting me. You know, they're trying to throw this Justice League thing in my face. They track me down to the gym, put a Superman sticker in my locker. Or it's just a coincidence. But I'm like, of all the stickers, why has it got to be Superman? Or you have a stalker. <laughs> I got a Superman fan stalker. That's it. Maybe it's this guy who's asking why we hate the <laughs> <laughs> Um Big man travel, I guess. I don't know. I could be screwing the name up. Says... If you could cast Denzel as a comic book character, who would it be? I've already said um, my man, Magneto. If you could cast him as someone, who would it be? Nobody. Nobody? You don't want Denzel in there? No. no. All right. I, uh, don't, I don't think, and, and obviously the guy is a phenomenal actor. Yeah. It's just that he's the man on fire. He's the eraser. Mm -hmm. um, he's not Magneto, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I mean- Please pr prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but my initial opinion, I don't want to see him in a comic um, movie. RR says, if episodes three through eight of X-Men 97 are a zero out of ten, it would still surpass Secret <laughs> Invasion. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you agree with that? <laughs> right. I do, but I don't think that that's going to happen. They're definitely not going to be. Zero you know, maybe after um, all the all the series ran out from the this uh, the the writer that they just fired. Yeah. But uh, oh, that's season two, right? Yeah. So 
Um, I think we good until season three comes up, and then we can you know revisit. Mm -hmm. um, we got Arthur says Daredevil over Batman. Okay, um, I mean, uh, in what way? I I I don't even agree with that. No, so I, don't I mean Daredevil's cool. Yeah, but no, no, he ain't cooler than Batman. No. And I think Batman would whip Daredevil's ass. Uh, definitely. Daredevil, I mean, he'd be glad he was blind that he couldn't see this ass whooping. <laughs> <laughs> um, couple more here. Um, so remember we saw the early um, images of the Batman Cape Crusader characters yeah. with the weird looking Harley Quinn and, you know, oh, yeah. this clay face that looks like a Grim Reaper or whatever, or whatever the hell you could. No, Scarecrow. Like it was yeah, just Scarecrow. So, um, Bo. M15 says it honestly might be the worst version of each character in history. Every single one is garbage. <laughs> yes, yes, that's spot on. That yes. is spot on. Uh, Brisky T says, here I am, LOL. How is Zack Snyder Justice League overrated? That's like saying Loki, Infinity War, and Endgame is overrated, LOL. Is you saying LOL because that's a joke? Like you're messing with? There's no way. Anyone in their right mind. There's no way they would put Zack Snyder's Justice League on the same level as Infinity War. I, I don't. I That's insane to me. No comment. Why I say it's overrated is the um, fan base, how crazy everyone got about Like, they talked about it like it was up here. Right. Right? Like, I, mm -hmm. I went into that. This is why I say it's overrated. Based off of all the feedback I saw online, the whole restore the Snyder, 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 every fucking day, right? Mm -hmm. And then they finally did release it. And I didn't jump on it right away because I saw that it was three weeks long. Like you actually right. have to, it takes literally days to, to complete. Mm -hmm. um, I saw this crazy feedback, like how it's the greatest, it's this, it's, and then I watched it and I was like, it's not a bad movie, right. but it was tainted by what everyone else said about it. It was overhyped in my opinion. Right. It didn't right. live up. Just like I said, X-Men 97 exceeded my expectations. Zack Snyder Justice League did not live up to the expectations other people set. Right. And you know when a movie is bad? When they make a black and white version. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got to check the logic on that one. But, I, hey, for this one, it fits. So I'm going with it's it. It's like <laughs> I got I to gotta make something out of this because it is so bad. Mm. Maybe one of these a hit, right? Right. Um, neither. Wow. All right. Um, Thaddeus Bridge says, checking back <laughs> on the Madam Web reaction. <laughs> <laughs> you have to check back again. Yo, you know what's crazy? The movie's been out about a month, and it's already available for purchase or rent. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it is. Well, that, that at least that at least cuts out some of my time. Yeah, I don't, I don't have to give up my my kidney debt. My mutant powers just right. grew back from the last time I went to the movies. <laughs> that you have to pay for to get some popcorn and a soda. Absolutely. But um, yeah, I can I can probably stomach it. You know, yeah, you better know at my house. Hey, may, may, maybe I'll scoop it up. Maybe I'll watch it this sure. week and, and we'll do a little yeah, review. That's Four dollars so, or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's worth. Yeah, it's better than that than actually taking you know spending a whole bunch to go watch it in the theater because right. I also would probably fall asleep. You know that, and then now I now I spent all this money and I didn't even get to watch it. Right. So yeah, you're right. I'll pay the four dollars. I'll watch it this week. So we'll do that. We'll review it next week. Sure. <laughs> That's gonna be as they say a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> what well, is it on? What what platform? Um, Netflix, Amazon. No, you got you gotta buy it or rent it. So Google or Apple, wherever you normally wherever oh, you okay. buy digital shit at. So yeah. Um. Yeah. No, it ain't gonna be on Max anytime. Like they want it on there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh, Wicked Joker says about the, the Batman cartoons, you have to think how these even got approved. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, who's signing off on that? Like, I want to see that guy who's looking at that shit and like, oh, these are good. Right, these, right. these are badass. Right. <laughs> it, again, it's it's this this person who wants to recreate something in their own yeah. image, and they're messing it up. Or maybe it was <laughs> Matt Murdock, and he couldn't really see the images. That would explain it. <laughs> <laughs> he probably thought they were great at that whole sonar thing. So, last Ma one. matter of fact, I mean, not only could he not see it, he didn't realize he was writing for DC. <laughs> exactly. He ain't no company was that. <laughs> um, Corey Rouser says, I bet Legion of X Men would destroy Superman. Professor Xavier's son, who's crazy powerful. Yeah. I, you know, we'd have to maybe do a little deep dive into Legion, but I don't disagree with that. Well, Superman isn't very mentally powerful. No. Which. Back to Storm again, that was another one of her things mm. because she controlled weather so much. Yeah. Or she, I mean, she just, like, stress tests her brain, so she has, a, like, a high resistance to telekinesis. Right. So Superman, I mean, the, the son of Professor X, 
Eh, probably scramble his brains yeah. like, quickly. I think so, dude. So, and the last thing he says is, by the way, love the podcast. Well, Corey, we love the podcast, too. Yes, absolutely. And we right. love you for supporting us and everybody <laughs> else. So we appreciate the support. This was a, another We Respond. Mm -hmm. Fun as always. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of good stuff. Some stupidity. But we can't help that. That's what happens mm -hmm. when you hit the internet, Adrian. That's it. Um, so if you've not done this yet, hit the subscribe button, like this video, share it with someone else out there who needs some of this comic book knowledge <laughs> dropped on them from us. Now, we are not experts, though, right? We uh, are not experts. You like your preparing something there, Adrian. Yes, sir. What um, you got? So I think it was last week somebody asked what um, anime movies that we watched. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I said I was going to go yep. and get the names right mm -hmm. um, because I've been watching this stuff for many years. Yeah. So um, I just my I got like eight of them. Okay. That are that are kind of like my favorite. So I mentioned Bubblegum Crisis, mm -hmm. which is like 40 years old. There's also Vampire Hunter D. Okay. Um, there's um, Castlevania. There's like four seasons of that. Yeah. Pretty cool. Resident Evil. Hathaway, which is like a space pirate thing like Corsair in okay. the X-Men. Right? Um, the Legend of Korra. I, I can't get down with the airbender, but this is like after the airbender. Got which it. is pretty cool. Um, and the, the latest two, which are like phenomenal. Arcane, which is like a steampunk kind of thing on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And then the Blue-Eyed Samurai, mm. which is very adult. Yeah. So those are my eight. Um, I just wanted to, I, I said that I was going to get the names out. I just yeah. want to get. You're a man of your word, Adrian. So that's, that's it. That's my list. Nice. Love it. Well, that's how we do it here. We're, we're men hey. of our words, if that makes any sense. I <laughs> looked up the one that I watched too, Adrian. It's called Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's the extent of my um anime journey um, Alrighty. yeah so who knows maybe, maybe i will maybe i will turn over you know the leaf and and mm. dig into it yeah it's just there's so much it's oh, kind of yeah, like yeah. comics like i couldn't imagine getting into mm. comics now mm. like with all of it Dude, you'd be busy for years oh yeah you'd be able to you have like a choice either get into comics or watch Zack snyder's justice league they take about the same amount of time <laughs> so <laughs> All the comics versus one movie. <laughs> it's about the same. The same length of time. Wow. Yes. Um, so if you haven't learned this yet by joining us, we are full of tomfoolery here on Only Comics, right? A little bit. A little tomfoolery here. Right. There. Not Tom Cruisery, though. We don't, we don't get yeah, down with yeah, that yeah. shit. So anyways, Adrian, thanks for coming in, as always. Always, man. And we'll be back next week. So next week uh, on, the, um, on the agenda, we got X-Men 97, Episode 3. Yep. We're going to... Most likely dig into Madam Web. We're going to get into this <laughs> web they call Madam Web, Adrian. Right, and, that's it. Um, now, if you had to predict, this is what we'll, we'll end with. If you had to predict what score you're going to give this movie after you watch it, I'm going to predict that I'm going to give it like a three. What would you say? Wow. Yeah. I'm going to go with like a six or seven. Really? Actually. Yeah, okay. because, I'm, because I'm trying to look at it from a perspective of the movie individually. Okay. Now, it is nonsensical that it doesn't have Spider-Man <laughs> exactly. in it. But you have a Spider-Man looking, looking kind of character, right? Yeah. So I'm going to give it yeah. high hopes based on the individual movie itself. Mm. So I'm going to say six or so. Okay. We'll see who's right next week. Um, yeah, it is interesting. There's spiders everywhere. There's spiders on their costume. There's spider powers. <laughs> there's webs. There's the the word web in the title. Right. But there right. ain't a damn Spider-Man to be seen. Right, right. But you know what, though? Um, I am secure in my manhood, mm. so if I am wrong, yes. I will say that you'll I was admit wrong. it. Okay, yeah. you are, and you I'm are good. a man of your word. I mean, you came back and delivered the eight anime titles like you said, er told everyone you would, and we're going to review Madam Web like we told you we would. <laughs> so we will see you all next week. We appreciate you joining us. If you want to look as fresh as we look in this Only Comics merch, go to onlycomicsmerch.com, pick up your merch there, and we will see you next week. Episode fifty is going to be a big one. We'll see you then. Ah! <laughs>